welcome to Crime and Justice. Seems like a long time since I was last down here. Really does. When was I last down here? Was it, was it on Sunday? What day are we on? Wednesday. I was on Sunday and I was on Monday. I didn't come on last night, no. That was why. I didn't come on Tuesday because, I don't know, Yes, last yesterday I was just feeling really bit wiped out. Plus, I was having trouble with my internet all day. Kept losing signal. So I thought it's pointless me going on live and doing a live because, you know, in my look, I lose signal while I'm in a live. Well, I hope you've all had a nice day. It's been another lovely day up here in England. Can't we tell? The kids are all back at school now, right? We're into September. The kids are well and truly back in school. And can't we tell? The nice weather comes. We don't get any summer. We don't get summer. We skipped summer this year. We went from winter to spring, right? And we sort of like kept spring all the way through. And now we've gone to autumn. And now we're getting the nice weather. We're getting some scorching weather. So to the point where I've had my windows open all day. Even last night I had my windows open. It was so warm. I was having trouble sleeping again last night. Tossing and turning. I go up at one stage and do myself... Uh, a little snack and a coffee and chilled out for another couple of hours before we're going back to bed. You know what I mean? It's just too warm. It's like a summer evening. Anyway, I'm sorry it took so long in the intro, but I had a message come through and I, was, I wanted to watch it, but I couldn't watch it on my phone. So I can only watch it on my laptop. But I couldn't put the sound on it because otherwise it would come through on here. So I thought, I'll leave it, I'll watch it later. And it's about two people who I used to work with. Me and my daughter used to work with these two people. And they live by each other. And I'm not joking, it's getting nasty. I'm quite shocked from what I've just seen and read. I haven't heard it, but I'm just shocked by what I read and what I saw. Anyway, I'd like to give a big shout out to Grizzly True Crime. Because, no, 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 sorry. Not tonight, not this night. Tonight, it's plunder. Sorry. I think it's plunder true crime or plunder. I say plunder true crime. I think you can get it. Hang on, I'll just see what it says on the, on the video. It says plunder, okay? So, let's edit this. Right. Big shout out to Plunga because she has released this video with no commentary. Right. And I know they've been having trouble, Plunga and two other YouTubers who paid a lot of money together getting all the information they've got, right, they're, put, they're pulled together and got all this information on the Stephen Stearns case and people have been putting this information out as their own and that isn't fair. So I was quite shocked when I seen this video, I went, wow, normally she'd talk over it or she'd have her name 
over it or something like that, but there's nothing. So I want to say thank you to Plunga for this. I really do appreciate this. If you're not a member, if you have not subscribed to Plunga, please go over. She does some brilliant work as well. Uh, tomorrow night, we're watching a video of Stefan Stern's police interview and arrest, and that's by Grizzly True Crime. So tomorrow, I'll be giving Grizzly True Crime a shout out. But yeah, credit goes to Plunder on this video tonight. It is a long one. I will. Sp I can't. I don't want to speed it up because it doesn't sound right. I did try earlier. Right, I did try when I was listening to it. I thought perhaps we could speed it up because it's like nearly three hours. Nearly three hours. And um, I did try and speed it up. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Let's add it to the screen for you. So let's see we start. You better. Oh. Where's this being screen to? X. Oh, I just want to see what kind this is being streamed down to. You say it can't be streamed on Twix because at the moment I don't know what the hell is going on. First of all, someone apparently I put some on my Facebook page that went against the Facebook community rules. I'm thinking, what did I ever put on Facebook? Right? And I was off Facebook for a couple of months. Right? And until the end, I thought, you know what, I'll just open a new Facebook account up. So I have. And then I went to go on Twitter last night. And it took me to this completely new... It got my own profile pic. And my name, ID. But the email was not mine. And I'm thinking... Who's, who's doing this? This is not my account. Right? And when I clicked on profile, it would take me to my account. But not as the owner. It, it was like I was visiting someone else's page. I couldn't comment. So I've had to put a complaint in. And I'm waiting to, to see if they get back to me. Otherwise, it looks like I'll be opening a new, a new Twitter account. It's getting ridiculous now. Someone's got it in for me. First of all, it was YouTube. And I fought for that. Then it was my Facebook. I've tried fighting for that. I've tried appealing it and appealing it. Not happening. Now it's my Twitter. So, now I'm on my new Facebook page. Of my, for my family. I've only got a couple of friends. And, um, hold on, I've got to stop this. Right, a couple of friends and my family on there. And that is it. I think I've got 10 people on my Facebook page. I'm not having no one else on there. Because someone keeps coming on. And I also couldn't get onto my other, into my groups. Luckily, because I opened up a new Facebook page, I could get in touch with my admin, who is, she's absolutely fab. She, and she kept the group going. And um, I've got 4.1K members on that Facebook page. Right? And... Um, she kept it going and has now put me as admin again. I went into it last night and took my old account off. Because there's someone on that account that is 
follow me around and do my heading. Anyway, so I don't know where it's streaming to Twitter. I might actually... No, I'll leave it, see what comes happens. Anyway, so we are going to be watching the police video interview with Jane Soto. Thank you again to Plunder. Let me take this off. I'll put myself here. Where am I? Where's Plunder? Where is it Plunder? There. Right. Let me make this bigger for you. Sound this full. It's on there. And we will get on with this. Now, I will be stopping this. I won't be running it all the way through because that isn't fair on Plunder. I will be adding my own commentary to it. So, but from what I heard of an interview she did the other week, it was like she was turning on the waterworks. One minute she's sobbing her little heart out. Next minute, She's all right, and I'm thinking, what the hell? What is going on? And I think that's still, this is a video now to this to that interview we listened to. Well, I, we haven't listened to it, but I listened to it on another channel. And I thought, what the hell is going on here? So we're going to listen to the interview now. So get your coffees. I've got mine. Get comfortable. Buckle up, because we're on for a ride. interesting just to watch people how they behave when they're sitting in a room on their own what is she thinking about you know what i mean Kevin, work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm Dave Mack, Detective Small, but from the city. Um, the goal, um, obviously, Kissing Police Department's doing most of this investigation. We're at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Our people, we have resources out there, obviously, doing active service. So it's kind of a joint effort. So Detective Small is kind of, we're going to go read through the timeline of everything else Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to go there. You want me to go through the whole timeline? Yeah, we'll start. We'll start with Sunday. Take me through Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Can I have tissue? Yes, ma'am. Make sure you grab some. Issues. Oh, I can give you this whole world. <laughs> so Sunday, birthday party. Just spent the whole day at my mom's house. 
they celebrated with the whole family. I was at work. I just started a new job last week or the week before. Okay. Where's that at? Well, Disney World at um, Coronado Springs, front desk concierge. Right now, there she said Sunday she spent the whole day at her mum's, her, gra- her grandmother's. We still don't know whether Madeline went home Saturday night or went back to her grandmother's Saturday night because she was ju- supposed to go home Saturday, but she didn't want to. She was in tears, begging them not to ma- not to take her home. So the gra- her grandmother got in touch with the grandfather. Obviously divorced, right? He said he'd have her at hers, his for the day. So she went to her grandfather's. But we don't know if she went back home Saturday night or if she went back to her grandmother's. And we still don't know now. Okay. Yeah. I was finishing up my last day of. No, it wasn't even my last day of training. I was still in the middle of training. Sunday in the middle of training, couldn't, I couldn't miss to go to her birthday party, so I went to work. It was my family all day, she had the best day, she was so happy when I got home and I saw her. I was at my house around 8.30 that night, I wasn't home, uh, she got dropped off alone. About 10 to 15 minutes later, Stefan showed up. At your house in Kissimmee. At my house in Kissimmee, he called me. Um, or he texted me, I don't know. But he let me know he was he was there and that she was um she was getting ready for bed. She was doing her routine. So she took her nighttime meds and she got in the shower to get ready for bed. What meds? What does she take? She takes hydroxyzine. Okay. Um, what is it for? It's for anxiety and for sleep. Okay. Um, now, could she take that by herself or would uh, would he have given that to her? Uh, I think she took it by herself. She got home and she had already taken it. How do you Typic- know that? That's what he told me. That's what he told me. Okay. He was there when you got home? You got home, they were already. I don't like her taking her meds without somebody visually seeing watching her because I don't want her to accidentally grab the wrong pill. She's comfortable enough to grab the pill while but I'm like, no, I need to watch you take them. Is there ever been an issue that in the past where she took too many or took the wrong thing? Or no. just like a thought in your mind? No, just a thought in my mind, just me being hypervigilant. Uh, I, I want to physically watch her take her meds and watch her grab to take them. I don't ever want there to be an accident of um, she took too many or she took. My biggest fear is that she would take Adderall by accident, uh, her daytime meds. Got it. Um, I got home around 10.30. I started getting ready for bed myself. I started eating and taking my meds because I had to take meds. When I went to take my meds, I realized, oh my God, I forgot to take my Saturday night's meds, which is why I felt so weird and so abnormal and not myself Sunday while I was at work. Everyone at work noticed I was acting different and not being myself. Like I couldn't smile in front of the guests. I felt this wave of depression that I haven't felt in years. It was my bipolar symptoms coming up again that I just, I've been meditating myself for for the longest okay. time. I realized I forgot to take my meds and I said, you guys, I need a good night's sleep. I need to take my meds. Um, I sent them to sleep upstairs in the best in the guest bedroom so that I could get a good night's sleep. Um, I suggested that we all sleep together in the same bed together. 
not the easiest person to sleep with. She rolls around. The bleeps are well redact. She'll. We have a king size bed, and she typically sleeps on one side, and she'll end up on my side when we wake up. Okay. So I asked her, I'm like, no, please, I need a good night's sleep. Um, if you guys can go upstairs and let me sleep. Um, I had asked Stefan to take her to school in the morning. We'll go to Sunday. So Sunday you took your meds. What meds, if you don't mind me asking, what meds do you take? And like, how does it, does it put you to sleep deep? Does it help you fall asleep? Or does it help regulate you? What, what kind of happens when you take the meds? Um, so they do all of the above. Um, they make me sleepy. They help me stay asleep. And they help me function. So I'm stable okay. all day. Can I have that medicine? Can I have what she's having? Because... I take my uh, tablet once a night, right, to help me sleep so that I can function the next day. Because if I don't, I'm a bit like someone with ADHD. I'm here, there and everywhere. I, my brain is doing overtime. So I want whatever she's having. Leave the bedroom. So if you woke up at like nine, so you never that morning. Monday morning. Yeah. So the last time you would have you would have been Sunday evening. Sunday. Okay. Take a minute. Okay. Why you take a minute? I, I, I was gonna ask you earlier. Has anybody reached out to you during the time that you've been investigating this to talk so don't add anything else? Negative, positive, neutral? My best friends have all been in contact with me. He was just trying to help me. They were, like, you know, setting up Facebook groups, uh, flyers. Um, no, no negative interactions with the public or anything? Nobody's like reached out with tips or accusations or anything like that. Not that I've seen. Did I've he... been avoiding social media because my family's telling me to not go on. Would you be okay with our digital people looking at your phone to verify there's no stuff coming in with socials, text, things like that? That's fine. Do you have a phone? Yeah. What they'll do is they'll plug it in, they'll do a forensic download of it so they have the data. That way they can go through it and say, you know, we didn't receive things, we didn't receive things, here's the communications in and out, things like that, so we can verify that for you. Okay. What's your password on it? Uh, 030288. 030288. Perfect. Is that a birthday? My birthday. It's your birthday? Yeah. Your birthday's tomorrow. All right. Today's the first. <laughs> So you said about nine o'clock on Monday you wake up? Yeah. I wake up. I have a doctor's appointment. I leave sometime between 9 30, 9 45. And I head over there. It's blood work appointment. The appointment's for 10 15, but they take a while to see me. 
Where was your appointment at? Lab Corp. In. Do you want me to tell you exactly which one? Sure. Oh, wait, I'm on my phone. <laughs> when we get back, we'll um, get back to it. It's, I need to Google it. It's the lab corp across the street from the loop in Kissimmee. Okay, I got it. Had my point. I finished there sometime between 11 and Stefan was there. I had talked to him a little bit earlier while I was waiting for my blood work appointment. And he let me know, oh, I'm so sorry. I left my phone at home by accident. Um, school, everything went great. She got up super early, got up really quick. Um, she slept most of the way I'm in the car. Um, I asked her multiple times if she wanted McDonald's, but she said no. Because um, that was the plan, was that they were going to stop at McDonald's that morning and go get breakfast. Okay. He said uh, that he had gone to the bake shop and they were closed and they didn't open. So he he waited there for a while and left. And then. Now, take note. He said you went to the bake shop. Now, this was brought up in the last police interview we listened to of his, right, the, the audio one, and I said, what time does the vape shop open, and he said 10 o'clock, and I said, so why would you go to the shop, like, at quarter to 9, 9 a.m. in the morning, if they don't open till 10, which is true, why would you go there for an hour early, just to whatever, to get some vibe. You could do that later on in the day. Why? I wouldn't be sitting around for an hour. I'd be doing other little things, maybe. Going to other shops, maybe. Picking up some stuff from the groceries or whatever. Right? But I wouldn't be sitting outside a vibe shop for an hour. So he was going to go back later. Um, he When I saw him at the house, everything was normal. We were chatting, we were talking. He was acting normal. He was sitting in my computer chair, just messing around on his phone. While we were hanging out, he mentioned something along the lines of, oh man, I've been avoiding this phone update for a really long time. I should probably update it now. And I said, do it, don't avoid it, just get it over with. And he updates his phone and then tells me, Oh my God, I don't know what button I just pressed, but I just factory reset my entire phone. And I said, how the hell does that happen? That gives you options now when you reset your phone? And he goes, yeah, apparently I, I wasn't paying attention and just, I pressed, I just pressed the button and it happened. And I said, oh, that's no, it doesn't happen. that sucks. You have to go to your settings. Um, later on, he tells me he's going to go back out and I think this is around... 12.30, 1 o'clock. Still on Monday? Yes, still on Monday. 12.30 in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. He tells me he's going to go back out. He's going to stop at a few gaming shops. Uh, and then he'll meet me at the house at 2.30 so we can get together. <sighs> he left. I hung out at the house for a while. Just waiting for 2.30 to roll around. 2.30 rolls around, and I'm already calling Stefan, and he's not picking up his phone. 2.30 comes, I leave. About 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from him going, I just got back home, I left my, home, my phone home again, I'm so sorry. How long ago did you leave? And I said, about 10 minutes ago. He goes, I'm so sorry, I missed it. I really wanted to go with you. And I was just like, it's fine. I figured he wasn't going to make it. Because when I looked at the time when he left and said he was going to visit three shops, 
I didn't think he had enough time to visit them. He told me while he was gone that he got a flat tire somewhere on 182. The wheel just shredded and fell apart. So he was changing the tire and it took him a really long time to do it. Um, he said he hurt his thumb while changing the tire, like the frame or something slipped and something pitched his finger and he ended up having to yank it out. And he said he hurt his finger. Um, I want to touch on something real quick. When you were calling him, he eventually told you that he left his phone there. Did you hear the phone at the house? No. If it was anywhere, it would have been upstairs and I wouldn't have heard it. It would have been in the guest bedroom. Do you typically go upstairs? Who, me? Yes. Only if I'm doing laundry. That was all. I was just curious if you had heard the phone uh, when you were trying to call him that day. I did it. So he tells me all that. I get off the phone with him. I'm waiting wait for about an hour and 10 minutes. 404, the bell rings, and I'm waiting. I'm the first in line. And she doesn't come out. You were in your car? I was in my car. So. In the car line, yeah. Okay. At this point, it's been a few minutes. She should have been out by now because she's usually one of the first kids out. She knows I'm the front of the line. And I'm holding up the line behind me because there's kids getting in the cars behind and they're all waiting. They can't, oh, no. they can't get around me, right? So I start calling her, forgetting that I have her phone on me. I had found her phone earlier that morning. She had left it at home. And I brought it with me because she does this often. She does leave her phone. Where was and the phone at my house? It was on top of the dresser in her bedroom. Downstairs. Down, downstairs. Okay. So, just so you know, mm -hmm. I have a four bedroom townhouse. Okay. The living room has a partition in it, a fake, like a fake wall kind of thing. That's got her bedroom in it. That's got a bed, a dresser, and a desk on it. Does she sleep there? No. She'll hang out there. She'll use her computer and hang out there. She, that's her hangout spot. But she primarily sleeps with me every night in my bed. Um, that's because I know the roommates wake up super early in the morning. They're going to be in the kitchen. They're going to wake her up if she's sleeping out in the living room. So I don't. So your bedroom downstairs, her makeshift bedroom downstairs, guest bedroom upstairs. Yes. Got it. Um, her dresser, her phone was on her dresser. Um, when I found it, I was like, oh my gosh, she's like, the phone out. That's great. Uh, I brought it with me to the school because I was just going to yell at her and then just hand it to her so she could have something to do on our way home. On our way home. 410 rolls around and she's still not out or 409. And then at this point, I'm feeling the pressure from the cars behind me. I'm like, okay, they're all full. They're only going to leave if she's not here yet. So I take off and I'm thinking, maybe I missed her. Maybe I forgot to tell her I was picking her up from school today because I don't know if she knew that I wasn't working. I don't know if she knew if I was off. Um, so I asked, um, I, asked. I don't know if I told her that I was going to get her. So I left thinking maybe she walked. That's pretty close to school. If I can't pick her up at school, that's where I tell her to Um, I drove the path she would have walked. I didn't see her. I got to the office. And she goes, no, it's a little too early. I said, okay, let me go drive back down and wait along the path she would walk and just wait. And I parked and I waited. I waited. I'm not sure how long I waited. Maybe somewhere between five to 10 minutes. She still wasn't there, and I looked at the time, and I'm like, okay, she should have, she should be back around my office by now. Maybe she took a different path, and I didn't see. So I went, no, she's still not here. And I'm like, that's really strange. So I call. I don't know if I text her. I call. I think I text her. And I asked, hey, or I called. No, I called her. I asked. Um. She said, no, she didn't make it to first or second period. 
And I said, what do you mean? She was dropped off close to the school. Um, she should have been in school. She goes, no, she didn't make it to her second period. I said, please check with the rest of your friends, see if she made it to her any of her other periods. Um, at some point in this, I emailed one of her teachers asking, I actually emailed a few of her teachers and two of them responded. One of them said, no, no he, she did not make it to class. And I checked her attendance for the rest of the day. She wasn't in school at all. Like he sent me a screenshot of like her attendance and it said zero, zero, zero. You still have that in the book? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you need to know what app, I'll tell you what app it's, it's a special school app. Um, he said she was missing all day. And at this point, I start to panic and freak out because that can't be the case. She was dropped off. Uh, I had to go check her attendance at school, but the office had closed already. The oh. lights were off. I could see a student sitting in there in the darkness, but I couldn't see any of the administrators or anybody in the office. Lights were off. Everything was closed. They wouldn't allow me in. I think at this point, the teacher had responded to me and told me she didn't make it to school at all. I start having like a freak out panic attack. And Are you still just you at this point? Is it you and Stefan? It's me and my sister. And I want to say one of them is Catherine. Um, I start panicking. And and I think at this point I call Stefan and I tell him, hey, she didn't make it. She's not, she's absent today. She, she, there's no attendance of her at all today. I'm like, right now. And he said, okay, I'll be there. And he came to the office. And there for like three, three hours, I think. Um, Eventually, I. Hi, Lady Talk, Lady Kai Talks. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't see your comments coming up. <laughs> Sorry. I'll take care while traveling. Don't know, want no accidents, please, Lady Kai. So I got a bit engrossed in that video, that this video thing. I keep forgetting to stop every so often. <laughs> <clears throat> Plus, I've got messages coming through on my phone, and I'm checking my phone. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my lord! I need to let everyone. I need to tell my family. Do not contact me between eight and ten p.m. on the night time because. I'm on, I'm on my live. I will not get back to you. You distract me. Unless it's life or death, do not contact me. And if it's life and death, then it's better be really, really good. Anyway, let's get back to this. This is only... This is calm. You, it, this is only 26 minutes into it and it's two hours long. <laughs> contact one of my friends whose husband works or ex-husband works for OCP or for you guys or yeah okay. and I messaged him and I talked to him and I asked him what I should be doing because you guys aren't responding quick enough um who's well, you know his name where he works yes uh Nick Mann okay or Mahon do you sure. know what he does here I think he works for Swabs Figure out. Yeah. Um, he tell you to wait. I can't remember anymore. <sighs> I think he let us know that there were other kids missing in the area, which is why you guys weren't responding quick enough. Um, 
I think an eight and a nine year old had found missing around the same time too in a playground. They forgot to tell they didn't tell their mom they were going to the playground or something like that. Um so all the cops had were over there on that side of Hunter's Creek. My sister's boyfriend, ex boyfriend, whatever he is, thought it would be a good idea to go to the park and talk to a cop there and see if he could bring a cop back. And that's what he did. Okay. Um, and then at that point, that's when the cops started asking us questions, taking a report. Um, interviewing me, they interviewed Stefan. They asked Stefan um, to take them back to the location where he dropped them off and he showed them wherever he dropped her off. Um, they were looking for cameras along the path and um, I don't think they found any cameras along the way okay. during the video recordings. I think. Did Stefan go with them in their patrol cars or did he drive himself when they followed? How did that work? I think he went with them in the patrol car. Then they came back. And then that's it. Everything was done. The cops were done. We were done. What time? You remember what time that was on Monday? It's where she goes. She's so calm. She goes, like, the police come. They do this. They do that. Then they go and we go. That's it. Nothing else to be done. Uh, what? To me, nothing else to be done. This is your daughter was missing at that time. I'd be on my hands and knees going through every scrub, every bush, everything. With a little torch in my hand, I'd be going through every bush. I would be going, well, that's it. Let's just go home. No, so, no, no. After dark, say 8 o'clock. What did you guys go do after that? We were in separate cars, me and Stefan. Okay. I ugly cried on the way home. I shouldn't have been driving. But I ugly cried on the way home, and I went straight home. And then the first thing I did was call Fox 35 News to see if we can like air some missing children information out there. Um, when you say ugly cry, just overly emotional tears make up running or is there like, what, what is your meaning for ugly cry? Sobbing where I couldn't see the road and I shouldn't have been driving, like I was swerving. He she said that. She said, like, sobbing. Uh, he asked a question, you didn't have to go sobbing. Like, I couldn't see where I was driving. It's like she, it's as though she answered it, as though she said, well, you know what I mean, what do you expect? I was upset, sort of thing. No. He asked you a question. You didn't have to answer like that while sobbing. Excellent. <sighs> Fox 35 come out to your house, or what was their response? They responded the following day. I think we did a Zoom video interview. Did Stefan follow you home? I don't know if he followed me, but he, he drove home, yeah. Um, I mean, was it within a reasonable time when you got there? Like, yes, yes, oh. yes. Um, drove home, we waited there, we didn't know what to do. Um, I stayed up late. I think I called Fox 35. Let me see what I, do. I think I, I had to eventually eat and take my medication. He told me he was going to go out cruising that night to go look for her. And I said, I even questioned that. I asked him, are you sure it's a good idea? You should probably sit tight. Um, let's just wait to see if she comes home. Um, and he said he was going to take a drive out. I had completely forgotten about him wanting to take the drive or that he actually did it. 
and it wasn't confirmed to me until the following day where agents came to the house and we sat in the car for a good amount of time and I noticed the chair was adjusted. And I said, did you drive my car? And he said, yeah, remember I said I was going out last night. To That's right, you did say that. Um, Can you tell me where you look? I think he said up and down 192 and I said, why there? And he's like, I don't know, I'm just looking. I was just trying to find, trying to look anywhere. I'm just like, but what I don't understand as well is she said in one of her interviews, and I picked her up about this, right? They said, why didn't you use your car? Well, first of all, no, let's backtrack. In one of the interviews, I read that apparently it stated that Stefan Stern come to the house and picked Madeline up on the Monday morning. I'm all... Okay. All right. And I thought, I wasn't wrong then. I did hear that. Because I kept questioning myself. I was thinking, did I hear them say that at the very beginning of this case? Did I hear them say that James said that Stephen came and picked Madeline up on the Monday morning? And I was reading something. I was listening to one of the videos, and it's, I think it was in one of the um, documents, right? And it stated that Jen said that Stefan came over Monday morning to pick Madeline up to take her to school. I thought, so I wasn't imagining it then. I wasn't, I know I'm getting old, but and my brain cells are getting a little bit confused with each other fighting with each other in my brain, right? But I knew I, I'd heard it. So, and then you've got people saying, so why didn't Stefan use your car on the Monday morning, right, to take Madeline to school? Because Madeline don't like being seen in his car. She don't mind being seen in her mum's car, but not in his car. So why didn't they take and use her car? And she said, well, it's not on my insurance and I didn't want to risk it. Right? And then they went, but you let him drive it on the Monday night when you went round cruising. You know what I mean? So the two statements, like the one, not letting him use car on Monday morning to take us to school because he wasn't on her insurance, and then letting him use her car on the Monday evening, early hours of Tuesday morning, to go round cruising. A bit... One is wiping out the other, sort of thing. But I also... I knew I heard it right. I'm going to pull up the documents one night. I'm going to do another live with the documents that I've got. And I'll go through the documents I've got and I'll find that where it says how Jen stated that Stephen Jones came and picked Madeline up from the house to take her to school. And I thought, well, where was he then? Where was he? Where was he staying? Right? Because I knew his parents lived quite a way, away, uh, quite a distance away. And I thought, why would he travel like over two hours away to come and pick Madeline up in the morning, take her to school. But it's there, it's there in black and white, and I'll prove it, I'll show it on one of my lives. Did you say if you found anything or talked to anybody, or just roamed? Yeah, roamed. <sighs> Hi, Ryan. When you felt, when you were getting ready for bed, you were tired, emotional. Were you falling asleep when he left, or were you already asleep when he left? I was already asleep when he left. Okay, did you sleep downstairs? Yeah. In your bedroom? Yeah. When you woke up, was he already awake? Was he still sleeping? He was asleep in his bedroom upstairs. No, I'm from I Scotland. Yeah. Okay. I'm from Scotland, Ryan. Well, originally from Birmingham, England. What did you guys do Tuesday? Or just... I'm originally from Birmingham, England, but then I came to my sense some sort of, my brain cells stopped fighting for about five minutes. 
And I came to my senses and thought, no, I'm leaving Birmingham. I'm going up north. I'm going up to Scotland. So I moved up here, what, 2007? Oh, 2008. So, yep. So, I will, I'll pull up the documents one night and I'll, I'll highlight it so that I know where I'm looking at. You're not together, you're not together. What's the timeline on Tuesday? Tuesday, he slept. I woke up early and started making phone calls to like the National Hotline for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, I called the number that the sheriff's office had given me. My internet is very um, low at the moment, so if I cut out, I'll be straight back on. They let me know that she was like the best, uh, like the, what did she say she was? I don't remember what she said her position was. Like she let, just yeah, got the into the letters from she was starting to work yeah. on it, so she didn't have any anything new for me. I know you're from um, Glasgow. My daughter lives down her there. Name is Bonnie Mitchell, I remember that. Um, she asked me to send her some photos. Uh, the National Exploited Children's Hotline Police asked me for photos as well. Um, I think at this point, um, I had asked my friends and family to start contacting news outlets to try to get as much attention on this as possible. Um, uh, I had a lot of phone calls coming in and I was picking all of them up, hoping that any of them could help me, whether it's any news reporters, or people who had saw, seen my phone on the uh, my phone number on a flyer and was trying to give me suggestions. Um, somebody letting me know that they took flyers all the way to Orlando International Airport and posted them all over the place in case she was being trafficked. They suggested that I go to Amtrak and Greyhound. Uh, I had my sister making all these runs for me. I didn't leave the house to do any of this. Stephen still asleep. Yeah. Eventually, reporters come to the house and do an interview. And at this point, Stefan was awake. I did an interview with them. And then Stefan was crying in the background. And I said, Stefan, do you want to do the interview? Um, you can if you want. And he sat in front of the camera. Stefan crying in the background. Oh, my God. Pull the big boy pants up, man. Grow up. I can't believe I've just heard you say that he's crying in the background. <laughs> oh, God. I did an interview where he cried. Do you know which news outlet that was with? I know there's a video on Fox 35 with him sitting to be on like a webcam. Yeah, that was Zoom. He was sitting in the Zoom. background for me. Okay. I, I know but that you had one. In person interviews with reporters? Yes. You, I want to say it was Channel 9. Okay. Um, yeah, he was sitting there behind you in that interview, cracking his knuckles. So I'm here. I'm listening. You know what I mean? We know. He didn't have to sit there. He could have sat. Out to the way of the camera. But he had to put his chair right there, just on the edge, so the camera could catch him. Um, yeah, channel nine. And he spoke to them? Yes. Okay. And he ugly cried in front of the camera, too. So he was fucking big sob crying. Are you saying that now, or do you... I'm saying that now. I didn't okay. think that at the time. At the time, I thought he was truly heartbroken and... Not that he had done all this shit to her. 
Like, I, I look back at shit now, I'm just like, he was fucking lying. He was fucking faking. What else has he been lying to me about? I know he's like a master liar and manipulator because he's, he's done it to his parents. And he's told me and shown me the lies he's done to his parents. But I don't know why I never thought, n- not me. The lies are about money, they're about where he's at, what he's doing. What's he? Yeah. All that. Um, to his parents? Yeah. He's stolen money from his parents. Um, they used to have a few thousand dollars hidden in like a closet for emergency fund kind of thing. And a few, during COVID, he sold like he wanted RC cars. See, if he wants something, he's going to get it. Uh, no matter what. So he wanted RC vehicles, uh, their remote control cars, fancy ones. They were a few hundred dollars. And I'm poor. I know I can't afford it. And he's showing up at home with these things. And I asked him, where are you getting the money from? Because we don't have this money. He goes, oh, my dad. And I said, your dad gave you money? He goes, no, I took some from his closet. And I was like, like, they have an emergency stash? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, he's going to notice when he's missing. And he's like, no, he won't. It's so much money that he won't notice at all. Hmm. I've confirmed with Chris later on that he did notice money, but he never asked his son. Um, if I had a, a son who did that to me, I'd like to try and see him try and take money from me. But if I had the money like that and my son was coming over and he was going and dipping into it, I would put him six foot under. I really would. Right? My son's bad enough when you go to the pub with him. I remember going to the pub many nights with my son and I'd give him a tenner. I'd say, go and get a rounding, whatever, 15, 20 quid, whatever it was. Go and get a rounding. And I know I'd have like something like, I don't know, say five pounds back or three pounds back in change. Never got a penny of the change back. And at the end of the night, he came out of the pub with more money than he went in with. Oh, look, I've got all the... Yeah, because you've been keeping my flipping change. Three quid here, five there, whatever. Yeah, you little shit. But if he took... If he was like that, I'd cut my son off. I'd say, no, you're 37 now. Grow up. Be a man. Get yourself a job. Get your own home. Get your own car. But they molly cuddled him. And they still are. They're still molly cuddling him. But I let him know, yeah, he was robbing you and just buying himself toys. He's also lied, most recently, he lied to his parents about where he would be. He told them he would be at his friend's house playing video or board games or something like that. But in reality, he came all the way to Kissimmee to hang out with us. Okay. Um, <coughs> but you guys were together Wednesday? After all the interviews, and you stay Wednesday, would you? I know yes. we had some detectives go meet you guys Wednesday, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, were you guys in the house together until detectives came? Yes. Uh, what was what kind of happened after detectives came? <sighs> Do you feel like everything starts to get blurry? Oh, I get it. Trust me, we were um, in this office goes, for like three days straight. Yeah, so I just don't remember what day you guys, what day I had conversation Tuesday with you guys. Tuesday night, Orange County detectives came out there because I ended up coming out Tuesday night. Yeah. I don't know if you remember seeing me or not that night. Okay. That was the first night we were at the apartment into the nighttime. Yeah, is that when you guys shut down the house for forensics? Yes. Okay. So Tell us about that. Okay. Um... So earlier that day, I think Detective Hunt came, or somebody came, and asked Stefan for his cell phone. If he would willingly give it up so that they can look at it, or if they would need a warrant. And I remember him saying, should I have asked a warrant? Should I have? And I'm like, no, if you got nothing to hide, give him your fucking phone. And um, I think we hung out in the house for a little bit. And then when you guys came in the evening, and you guys told us to wait outside and we waited in my car. 
he started getting very anxious and very panicky going, I want my phone back. I want my phone back. And I said, listen, at this point, it's their phone. It's theirs for fucking ever. I don't give a shit. We will buy you a new phone. It doesn't matter anymore. Whatever they need, they need. Like, let them look at it. And he's like, I just want my phone back. And I'm just like, do you, are you trying to make yourself more suspicious? Because like, you're, if you were to go demand your phone back right now, that would look suspicious as fuck. Like, what are you doing? Um, I'm thinking he's just getting impatient because he's bored and wants to play on his phone. And at one point he takes my phone to start playing with it. I, I give it up. And I said, here, play on my phone. Have fun. Because um, I think from my phone, he was trying to log into his emails, but he couldn't because uh, you need like two factor authentication from your own. Yeah, he wanted to get into his emails, he wanted to get into his Ever accounts, his Google accounts, and all this law to wipe anything he got on there off. Right? And I'm just like, what are you trying to look at? He had all those pictures on his phone, and each count he was charged with, he was charged with 60 counts at first. Then they had another... 3,700 pictures added to that. But each of those counts that he was first charged with 60 counts, each count had 10 charges on each count. Right, so even without unaliving poor little Maggie, he was going down for life. He's never going to see the light of day again. But he's going down for... He's doing the dead man walking. Yeah, and he's like, oh, my shipments, my packages. He's addicted to buying shit. Um, that's another thing. Me and his dad couldn't figure out where Stefan was getting money from to buy stuff since he's been unemployed the last two months, but he's constantly buying himself packages. Buying himself things off of Amazon, buying himself things off the line. Is this stuff you can confirm, or you think he's doing this? What? Buying packages. I can confirm because I I am linked to his Amazon account, okay. and his parents can confirm whatever UPS packages or whatever he's getting at home. Um, but I'm linked to the Amazon account. If you guys you guys have my phone, you'll see whatever shipment. I think most recently I did like birthday party. If you see birthday party stuff, that was me. But everything else, him. Um, he's constantly buying stuff, and he doesn't have money. He keeps saying he's got money in his savings, but me and my dad, his dad called bullshit. Christ, I know the Amazon drivers by name here. They come to me weekly. <laughs> I used to know my the the guy from Timu. But I don't think I've got the same guy no, no more. Because normally, if he's got a parcel for me and I'm not home, he will give me a phone call. And I will say, oh, can you leave it with this, uh, with this person? You know what I mean? But he did no phone call. And I had the parcel come the other day. And I had the card put through the door. And it was saying he'd left it at one of my neighbours. So I think I've got a new driver for that one as well. Which is a shame because I was getting to know this guy. You know what I mean? They all know. Hit the doorbell. I can hear the doorbell. I can't hear you knocking the door because I've got two doors. I've got my outside door. I've got an inner door. And I've got my living room door. And a flipping long hallway between my living room and my two front doors. I can't, cannot hear you knocking the door. Full stop. Hit the doorbell it comes up on my phone. Right? Anyway, so I know my Amazon drivers. Because he hasn't had, when he lived with us, he was struggling. His dad was helping him pay his bills, paying his rent, paying his gas, paying his insurance. Stefan was helping us, you know, supporting us by buying food and all that stuff. But I don't know what he did with the rest of his money. And I don't know where he's getting money from now. Um, 
you were telling us that he was trying to log into oh he's trying email so he's trying to log phone. into his emails on his phone and i said two-factor authentication you can't do anything you're just gonna have to wait till you get your phone back um what else we waited in the car I think at this point, when I noticed that forensics was locking down the house and you guys said we couldn't come back, I told him to call his dad because I had a feeling something, y'all knew something and it was going to come down on him. And I'm just like, they're focusing on the wrong person. They have the wrong person. In my head, I'm convinced you guys are just, that you had the wrong person. I wanted to think that he was good. Um, Before we get ahead of that, what is the conversation like between you two when you're in the car? Because y'all were in there for a good while while we were trying to figure things out at your apartment complex or your condo. What's the conversation like inside that car? Um, I'm trying to think back to what exactly we were talking about. My conversation with a guy who I knew and took my daughter to school that day would be, where the feck is my daughter? You took her to school. I trusted you. Where is she? Especially when he's acting so weird about his phone and all that lot. Should I hand it over to him? Yeah. I want my phone back. Well, no, you can't have it back. It's theirs now. They can keep it for all I fucking care. You know what I mean? So I'd be asking him, you took her to school. Where is she? You've been acting strange all yesterday after evening. Hovering, hovering over her at that when the police first got there at the grandmother's office. Hovering, did you ever see, did you see his face? Oh, this it's so oh, it's like the police turned up right, and he's hovering around. Yeah, it's just there. I understand what Madeline meant by. He's just there. He's just there. He's, you know what I mean? And then she gets that phone call and she, got, she goes, oh, I've got an unidentified number. And he's, he's looking at her and she answers the call. And then when she goes, oh, hello, Mr. S and it was a head teacher from the school. And you, you see him go, his head went back and he went, whew. You know what I mean? It's sick. Why is this happening? Why is this playing up? Fuck you. I know I... I just... I remember... I remember late in the evening, like... When you guys let us know we couldn't come back, and I called the dad. Or we called his dad. Um, I started saying to him, like, I think they're focusing in on you. Like, we need to call your dad, and I think we need to get you a lawyer. Um, I feel like they're focusing on the wrong person. And he kept saying the same thing. He kept repeating what I was repeating. That um, they're focusing on the wrong person. Um, they're wasting time. There. Um. How do you feel when you say he needs a lawyer? Now, what made her feel? That I was focusing in on him. Hmm? So, she, I think she knew something had, had gone on. I'm sorry, but she had to. 
she must have known something was going on with Stefan and her, her daughter. And it, I swear to God, it annoys me when you hear them say, oh, they've got child corn on their phone. No, it's not child corn. Just think of another word instead of corn. Think of that word. It's child abuse. Because if you say, like, corn, porn, corn, right? If you say that, then those people have consented to doing those videos. They are getting paid to do those videos. Yeah? Children do not consent to do videos like they, like he had on his phone and like others, which I'll be doing a, a, um, a live about tomorrow night, right? Um, so, children don't consent, so I don't like it when they call, call it child P. It's, it's, it's a sexual assault, a child, child abuse. Because you are, you're abusing the child. They can't, they don't know what is right and what is wrong. He didn't believe me. Like, when I told him, like, don't you see forensics is closing down the house? They fucking know something or there's something, like, they know something. Something's happening. They wouldn't be locking down the house this way if, if, if they didn't have suspicions of something. But in my, I wasn't thinking, I don't know why I wasn't thinking him. Like, I was just like, no, they've got the wrong guy. Um, he just kept, he just kept saying that they have the wrong guy, that, that um, they're focusing on the wrong person and that we're wasting time. And, and, um, we call his dad. We tell his dad to come down here and his dad to come down here and met us at a hotel. That was another thing. I don't have that much money. I live off a disability. Um, I couldn't afford to put us up on a hotel. Like when you guys said that we couldn't return, I was like, I don't know where to go. I was trying to think if any family member would have a spare room or anything like that. And not that would, not that I could take the three of us, or the, when I say three of us, I mean him and the dog. Um, you know what though, Jen? I wouldn't be worried about where I was going to be sleeping. I would sleep in a doorway. I'd sleep anywhere. I'd be and I know at my mom's worried. house, we wouldn't have been. I'd be more worried about where your housemates are going to be sleeping. You know what I mean? You don't think about that, do you, Jane? You've got two housemates who pay rent for those rooms, who I believe now have moved out. And I was listening to an, um, an enhanced audio, video audio of one housemate today, and I will be uh, going live on that. That will probably be Friday evening. Tomorrow I've got two lives. I've got one at seven, right, and then one at ten. So, busy girl tomorrow. So, and then I'm doing one on Friday at my usual time at eight till ten. But she don't worry about her anyone else but herself and that is just she's just selfish been welcome my mom, mom does not like Stefan she's never like Stefan I don't like so Stefan I knew that our only option was to go to a hotel but I couldn't afford it so we called Chris and Chris met us at a hotel uh, by, uh, by Disney okay. off a of western way and that's where we went um we got there pretty late. We checked in. I used the restroom and I was um, 
getting ready for bed or getting like laying down in bed probably around 3 30 3 45 in the morning and i fell asleep stefan was already asleep at this point did you go straight to sleep when you got in or just kind of drifted off as you were falling asleep uh like you went to the bathroom he goes straight to bed he was already in bed before i went to the bathroom okay. i was on my phone for a little bit he was laying in bed snoozing i went to use the restroom i was in the restroom for quite a while because i had like a, a terrible sub um when i came back out he was asleep at least i thought he was asleep but um <sighs> his dad stayed with you guys not in the hotel room. He stayed in a different room on the same floor. Okay. Um, the following morning, I wake up, I think around nine o'clock in the morning and Stefan's not there. And I remember thinking, he left again without his phone and didn't tell anyone where he was going. That's suspicious as fuck again. Why is he trying to But we took his phone, so he got a new phone? He didn't get the new phone until later that day, where his dad woke up, came to our hotel room, mm -hmm. and then handed him a phone. Okay. And said, here, have this phone in the meantime until you get your old phone back. Um, oh, so you were saying he's out and about with no phone. Yeah, he's, he's out and about with no phone, so there's no way for us to contact him. There's no way for us to... I didn't know if he even knew how to get back to the hotel. Because I drove that night. He's a little oblivious to when it comes to directions. Um, so I'm just like, you can't even figure out how to get here. Um, I believe someone said her car has sat nav. So if that's true, he only had to punch in the name of the flipping hotel. Well, I'm staying. Oh my lord. I swear to God, my six and seven year old grandsons would know how to do that. But he rolled in around 11, 11.15, rolled in with a cup of Wawa and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I was just driving around. I grabbed um, some Wawa on 182 and got lost. I didn't know how to get back to the hotel, um, but I'm here now. And I'm just like, detectives are about to show up. What the fuck would have happened if they showed up and you weren't here? Like, you would have been a, a fugitive. Like, what are you doing? Um, and he was just apologetic about not telling anyone, anyone where he went. Uh, but you know, I mean, he had a lot of copy. He said he was up at 192. Yeah, but in reality, I know that he truly took my car in the middle of the night to Northport, Florida, and was down there for an hour and came back. I didn't suspect that at all. Okay. I literally thought, I'm like, oh, this man, we were right next to like a public, uh, I'm sorry, a Target. So I'm thinking, oh, he's probably like stretch shopping, just looking at stuff. He likes to browse. But it's like maybe he's in there somewhere. But I didn't have a car. I had I, I couldn't go out looking, right? And also detectives were coming, so I didn't want to leave. Um detectives eventually show up. Um actually just we were in the yeah, we were in the hotel room for a while. Um he went back to sleep and slept. I took a little snooze for a little bit that morning and then I got up and then I went downstairs to the lobby and I saw Chris and Chris asked if I wanted some lunch. So we went to the hotel bar and ate some lunch. We brought up some lunch back for Stefan, told him to eat a little bit. Um, when he woke up, he took like two bites. Um, Then the detective showed up, we went downstairs. They let us know that there was a press conference happening, that, which we already had an idea was, was gonna happen. And they told us, they would give us a ride and escort us to the to your conference here. Uh, and that you guys would let us in the back way so that <laughs> media wouldn't see us. But in reality, now I know that was just interview guys with us. <laughs> but um, yeah, then we showed up here and got separated, haven't heard from him since, haven't spoken to him since. 
have no interest in speaking to him at all. Um, yeah, it was it then? Then we got interviewed. What have you done since? Like, where, where did you go back to the hotel? Do you stay somewhere else? No. Um, so after the interview and all that stuff, uh, Chris took me to my sister's house. Uh, I've been at my sister's house ever since. Cool. Um, yesterday I went out for a little bit to go to Target to try to take my mind off of things. I went to Target to go get myself a toothbrush and deodorant, things that I didn't have because I left the house so last second. Um, I also went um, to my ex-husband's wife's mom's house. Complicated overall practice. So, yeah. Yeah, um, they they consoled me. They just kept me company. They made they had they made lunch. Um, then I went back to my sister's house, and I've just been pretty much there ever since. Not when I went to Target, I decided like, oh shit, I shouldn't be out in public. People could recognize me. It can either be good or bad, where people could tell me. I've already had people recognize me uh, in my community, mm -hmm. and dealing with people's heavy emotions and them coming to me and crying and telling them, telling me they're so sorry and how they feel. You know what you should do. Yeah. Uh, Jen, do what Katie Proudfoot has done. She's dyed her hair darker. Why don't you dye your hair lighter? To like a brown or... Not a blonde, not a blonde. Blonde wouldn't suit you, but to a brown rather than what it is now. And... Change your whole look. That way people wouldn't recognize you. Plus, if my child was missing, would I how be walking around fecking Target or any fecking store? Well, it's so heavy because like it's I just have to kind of stand there and take their emotions and like I don't know, it's just it's so heavy. When I realized that these these were the interactions I was having in public, I'm like, I need to stay home because I just can't, I can't carry anyone else's emotions right now. I have my own to deal with, like, my own, I don't want my own mental health suffering right now, or for me to spiral and end up back being hospitalized. So what, um, what's your, when did you meet Stephen for Stephen? I met Stephen... In 2017, we both worked for Eco Homes, a real estate company. Yeah, can I was doing appointments, on the and he worked in the office doing like warranty work. Um, we met as coworkers. I think I'm out to speed friends. up just a little bit because we this is like still got another like two hours left of this. And then eventually, I asked him if he wanted to hook up, and he said sure. Come on. And yeah. Was it 17, 18? Did you live in Orlando, Kissimmee? Where were you guys in Kissimmee. And did you guys live together in 17? He technically lived at his parents' house, but he was staying at my house all the time. Okay. Same house you're in now or a different house? Wait, I have to get back. In 2017, he wasn't staying over my house. It started in 2018 when he started when he started hooking up and uh, he started sleeping over my house. Okay. And what, what were your next Was that in the correct yes. house you live in now? Yes. Okay. Have you, how long have you lived in that house? On and off, because at one point we moved close to where his parents live right now. In um, They live in Northport, Florida, yeah. Sarasota County. I lived in Port Charlotte, which is Charlotte County, the county right next door. Um, we had an apartment there for like six to eight months. We moved down there because, again, Stefan was promised a job and that fell through. So we supported ourselves in this tiny apartment for a little while until I ran out of funds. Do you remember what year that was? 
2020. You were, so when did you live in Port Charlotte? 2020? I don't remember what month I moved in, but I remember moving out in November. Oh, 2020. Yeah. Okay. So it, it was, it was some. So this is redacted all this. It's not me, it's them. Eventually, Stefan did come. A few years. Um, it wasn't until like June of last year that I can go upstairs to the guest bedroom upstairs because I just. Um, he's not a very clean guy. He's kind of a little hoarder, like collector. So just my house was always a mess and I was the way that I wanted it to look. Um, or the clutter just gave me like, so um, I asked him to go upstairs and he did. Uh, and he lived upstairs until March, I'm sorry, until December of last year. And then he moved to Northport, Florida with his parents. But they had promised him a job for that go through. So we were in the process of trying to get him to come back up here to get his job back at Disney and for him to move back into the house for a little bit. I'm not sure long-term. I know temporarily I was willing to accept him back. Was that something out of convenience for him? Because you... um, a little bit of both. We missed him. Um, and I wanted to help him out, like make it easy, like give him a place, like a base, a base to start at and then for him to start looking for something else afterwards uh, on his own. But um, You obviously relationship um, talk a lot. Is she a secret teenager? What is like your kind of day to day with her? I would have said a normal, a normal relationship. I asked, she would tell me. She was. I didn't think she was hiding anything from me. I didn't think she was lying to me about anything, but obviously she had secrets. I mean, the hindsight, I mean, all the stuff you found out over the past couple of days were like taking that out of the picture, your relationship with her. Okay. Like not, not, not saying, looking back saying, okay, I was being lied to, like up until you found out some things that you've been told. You guys had an open communication relationship. You talked about everything. Life. Yeah. Life. If anything, she was a little bit more open with Stefan because she told him about a boy she had a crush on okay. and um, that his name was and um, she described him. And Stefan's like, are you aware that she has a crush on a boy? I said, no. He's like, yeah. She told me that he's tall and um, she likes his fluffy hair. Yeah, and Stefan would not have liked that, would he? Now, what I want to say is on Saturday, apparently Madeline messaged him or called him, right? And his mum and dad said it was about the party. I don't think, because after that phone call, they said on a Saturday evening that he's very agitated, right, and anxious and all this law. And they didn't, couldn't understand what had set it up. I think that message, or maybe a phone call, because I think if it was a message, they may have found that message. Right, I think it was a phone call, and I think she was telling him, other things because I think it's in this interview I know in the audio one they push her a lot about her and menstrual flow and all that lot I think it's also in this one when was this when this conversation happened within the last week sometimes I'm not oh, sure okay. Like within, so we saw like, so 
within a week of that Sunday. Um, I'm not sure if she had, had if she had told him via phone chat. It must have been via phone, like phone conference, like a. We don't Facetime. We Google Meet. The Android version, version of Facetime. Yeah. Um, so we would Google Meet often. Um, sometimes when we get home from school, just and just talk all day, or sometimes I even talk all day. We would just bullshit. I would be doing my own thing. He'd be do, we're just keeping each other company on the phone. Um, and I think in one of those conversations, she told him that she had had a crush on a boy. But I checked those text messages with that boy, and nothing seemed weird either. So. Okay. How did he? I mean, it be, I mean, you see, she sees a guy at school. She thinks attractive. He shows her attention. I mean, she shows. How did he take it? Was he like? And I want you to think back before you know things you know now. Like, did he seem? Sorry, sorry, my mouse was on the stop and start button. I'm sorry, I thought it was just going quiet. Sorry. Concerned about her, but you seem excited for her, like she's, she's starting to you know, be a kid and have crushes and everything else. He seemed happy for her. Okay. Um, I was like, yeah, did you hear this? This is super cute. I hadn't. She hadn't told me. And I, and I wondered, I'm like, why didn't she tell me? Why'd she tell him and not me? And like, I want to know who she had a crush on. But maybe it's because I told her she, she, she had a rule. She wasn't allowed to date for a few years. Until so, like, I think I had said 16 or something like that. Like, longer dating. So then, that your relationship with her was open. Obviously, she's a child. She's not going to share everything. Yeah. Um, with him, it seems like she has a very open relationship with him. They talk, they hang out. So, it'd be okay with you if they went out and did things together outside if you were at work or something? So the living situation, the living situation with them, I'll be honest, seems weird. It's weird to me. She's got a bedroom downstairs. What's kind of the the mindset or the the thought process, the communication you've had with Stephanie about, you know, she's not going to sleep in her bed, but you guys are going to sleep in the guest bedroom. So originally the plan was that all three of us were going to sleep in my bed together. Um, and I'm not just saying Sunday. I mean, like. Oh, okay. So I had had a rule. She wasn't allowed to sleep in his bedroom at all. Like no sleepovers, no nothing for a very long time, for years. Um, Since we're pausing, yeah. what brought that on? Was that like a request of his? Like we sleep in the same bed, request of hers, or you just saying? Me being super paranoid not to trust anyone. Um, for the longest like, even though he treated her well, I still look at him on, you know, like side eye, like making sure, like, is that normal? Is this okay? That, that looks normal. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure that nothing was happening and that I was missing something, but, anyways. but, um, he never requested. I'm sorry. Repeat the question. Then. So I guess I'm, what you said, like, you had a rule. Like, obviously, we know now they've, you know, slept in the same bedroom together and everything else. I'm sure you're, questioning a lot of things that you haven't been told or that are going on. The thought process of them sleeping in the same bedroom caused you to say you had a rule for the longest time or they couldn't. Yeah. I have a son. He's a lot younger than her. He's four. But I guess I, if I was dating somebody or had somebody over, I would never establish, this is just me, a rule. He can't sleep in the bed with her or she's not going to be. It wouldn't even be a thought process for me. So that's why I ask because I wouldn't think of it even as an option. Yeah. So when you say you had a rule, I guess I'm asking what prompted the rule. Uh, sleepovers before. Yeah. Like, you want to watch movies and eat snacks? Can we do that? I'm like, no, no, no. We can all watch movies down here together. We can all sleep down here together. Um, up until, I mean, up until, up until June, all the time. So we were always, she would sleep in the middle. I would sleep on this side. She would sleep on the other side. Um, 
It wasn't until June that he got his own bed. But what makes me... This is what I can't understand, Jay. Is you wouldn't let her have go over to sleepovers at a friend's house because you didn't know the father and you didn't know the brothers. Anything could happen. I'm sorry to say, but the monster was living in the house. It was happening in your own home, yet you wouldn't let her go to a friend's house for a sleepover. Bedroom and I sent him upstairs. That's where the that's where the requests for sleepover started. Um, and I kept telling her no, 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 no. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, but eventually, at some point, like we, we really want to watch. I forgot what movie it was. They really wanted to watch something, and I was really tired. And I said, okay, fine. Um, go ahead, but this can't happen often. Um, and yeah, I, I want her to go upstairs and sleep with him. But honestly, I. I think I can count on one hand how many times that's happened, and it hasn't been many times that I've allowed her to have a slumber party with him, to be alone in a, in a bed with him. I'm usually around all the time. I, up until two weeks ago, you know, I was pretty much at home all the time living on disability. Uh, if I wasn't at home, just, you know, I was substitute teaching, but I was substitute teaching primarily at her school or it's school close by, but I make sure I get out around the same time and I get out in time to pick her up and take her. So she was with me pretty much all the time. She wasn't at school. Um, up until two weeks before she went missing, Stefan wasn't there. In fact, her grades went up, didn't they, during the December and January. She got pupil of the week in February. So she didn't have to worry about Stefan. But you, mother of the year, not, you wouldn't let her sleep at her friend's house as a sleepover because you didn't know the father or the brothers. But you trusted her to with your partner, well, ex-partner, he wasn't your boyfriend when Madeline went missing. He's just a friend. So why are you putting out there all this time that, oh, my partner, my partner, my boyfriend? No, he wasn't your partner. He wasn't your boyfriend. You'd split up in 2022, right? And then in 2023, sometime in 2023, he moved upstairs. And then in December of November of 2023, he went back home to his mum and dad's. Because his daddy wasn't going to pay the rent no more. And then all of a sudden her grades start going up and all this like, uh, you and Madeline aren't fighting as much as whatever. So, but you wouldn't let her sleep at a friend's house. Phew. So yeah, after, after when he's not there, where does she sleep? With me. She never sleeps in her room? No, always with okay. me. Quickly, do you know, and you may hate the question, do you know, do you have any idea? We currently have upwards of probably 200 people working on fire. Right, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is involved, the Kids State Police Department's involved, St. Cloud Police Department, Osceola County Sheriff's Office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FBI. Yes, under suspicious circumstances. So anybody who is somebody is involved. Yeah. So. Regardless of the circumstances, those people don't get to go home. Those people don't get to go back to their families. Those people don't get to live their lives, go back to their primary jobs. I know the sheriff has probably expressed to you that's his number one priority. I'm sure the same police department has expressed that to you, our detectives. This isn't something that's going to stop or go away. Yeah. Right? Anybody who knows something, anybody who may know something, is brought into a room, will be talked to, whether they're guilty, whether they're innocent. Because our number one priority, our jobs, have kind of stopped. I mean, the other things we have going on until it's fine, because that's the most important.
important thing anybody has going on right now. But with that, a lot of people are going to feel that whatever happened, I can tell you, and I know Pete detectives expressed to you that the thought process at this point is this is a homicide investigation. Yeah. Based on the evidence I've seen, based on the videos I've seen, I do believe. With that being said, and the reason I tell you that not to be an asshole okay. is because the thought process with us leads it in a different investigation, a different way. Meaning, whatever has already happened, right? We cannot change what happened most likely on Monday. We cannot change the fact that I believe Stephanie killed her, right? All we can do now is find her as quickly as possible. I mean, the two percent chance we're wrong and that she is alive—that's phenomenal, right? That's the best thing that can happen. On the chance that we are one hundred percent correct and she has passed away, finding her now versus later will bring closure to your family, will bring closer to everybody, regardless of how it happened or why it happened. Meaning, if you have an inclination of you know where she's at, if his father knows, that doesn't mean those people get held accountable for what he did. It doesn't mean those people get held accountable for knowing what he did. It means we close out the investigation. You know what I mean? So a lot of times we... Oh, like what a lie. What a lie. If she turned around then and said, well, actually, I do know where she is. You would then go and find Magdalene. Yeah. And then you'd be charging her as well. As in, what's the word? Conspiracy or something like that. Or knowledge of a crime. You'd be doing the same to the father if he knew. But fair dues, give it on the police. Yeah. Someone asks people questions. We say, hey, hey, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? And there's this fear of what happened already happened. I can't change that. So I'm not going to insert myself with knowledge because it's going to make me look bad. Regardless, at this point, I murdered her, right? He victimized her. He ruined her entire life from childhood until now. I think that there's probably some sense of guilt. And my fear is that sense of guilt is causing you to not want to assist the location of her, not because you're a bad person, but because there's that sense of guilt that what was happening was happening under your roof. And now, by her being found, wait, brings wait, that wait. all to your plate, and it doesn't. Oh, no. If I knew anything, I would still tell you. I want to believe that there's Jesus that you can tell But I don't, I'm not going to believe it until I have her body. So there are things, and the reason I say these things, and again, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but the reason I say these things is there's a lot of things you've said, and a lot of things I've kind of researched between Fox 35 story, between your initial statement to the police, a lot of things have changed. The initial statement to the police was you've watched her get dragged, you watched her weed, you knew exactly what she was wearing. Can I, can I tell you Absolutely. my thought process on that, or where I came from with that? I was handed this form, and I'm like, where do I start? What do I write? And somebody say, Somebody said, tell them what you saw. And so I started with, I saw. And then I wrote out what I wrote out. But it wasn't until later, I was like, wait, I didn't see her. I assumed that I saw her. I assumed that I heard her, but I didn't. In reality, I didn't see her. I only saw him. And I heard something in the kitchen, but I don't know who that was. Which we talked about today. But I guess my concern, there's other concerns. Right? Yeah. You were nervous. You the police have showed you their hand. They said, Stephanie, we want your phone. Stephanie, we want to talk to you. You're going to lock down your residence. You can't go back inside. Me? I don't care if it's the love of my life sitting next to me. I don't care if it's maternal grandma. If the police come and take my mom's phone and my son's disappearance, I'm not going to offer my mom a lawyer. It's nuts to me. That, to me, shows you prioritizing Stephanie. Yeah. Because at that point, you became more worried about him being falsely accused than anyone Does that make sense what I'm saying? Whether or not that's what you felt, does that make sense? People having lawyers is their constitutional right. That is a thing that everybody is afforded. But for somebody who's going through what you are going through, to offer him a lawyer leads me to believe that there may have been a conversation, there may have been knowledge, or there may have been some inclination that you have, whether it be his involvement, her location, or something to where in your mind there's guilt. Because you offer him a lawyer is very weird. I know. I know. I. That was still me under the assumption that I think at one point 
No, at one point you guys interviewed me and when you guys showed me the picture of her, I believed the sexual stuff, but I didn't want to believe that he had done anything evil to her. I'm like, no, what if she, what if he did this stuff fine, but what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her? I still wanted to believe his, I, I believed him. I believed his whole story. So I'm just like, I, I kept repeating that part. I'm just like, what if, what if she did get dropped off? What if she got abducted? What if she's missing? Um, but that was me assuming that you guys had the wrong guy. I wanted to think he was a good guy still, but clearly he's not. After everything you guys have told me and have shown me, I know he's the worst person on this face of the we earth. Know right now. Now. We know he's a piece of shit now. You know. But you oh, didn't know oh, that. Then. then you offered a guy who the police suspected suspected of kidnapping, abducting, assisting the disappearance. You offered him a lawyer. And then we don't have to round table that. You went back to you. What you just said is the sex stuff is fine. It's not fine. fine. I know every relationship is different. I know everybody's family is different. I won't ask you, but going on your going back on we'll go your expressed interest in Right, no, I haven't played that interview. I'm going to have to get that interview and get it shown to you. Because that is a good interview. Right, where they show her the photos and everything. Right. Now, um, that is the one where she turns the waterworks on and off. A bit like here, but even more in that interview. And after coming out of that interview, she phones his father up and says, you need to get an attorney for Stefan. Would die how? I'll be going, let him rot. Let him rot. They've just shown me a picture of my daughter in a car they believe was dead. They've just shown me pictures of him with my daughter doing disgusting things. Let him him rot. You know what? I sometimes think we should go back to the uh, medieval, uh, medieval times back in England where they put them in cages and hang them up. These cages, big human cages, and hang them up and they wouldn't get no food, no water, and the birds will come and pick their eyes out and everything. That's what they need to do to him. I'll use the word weird. I'm not going to shame anybody for what they, they like. Different sexual pleasures, different sexual experiences, different kinks that involve things you aren't comfortable with. The only thing he's ever expressed to me was like anal. Okay. Um, he had an anal kink and like butts. Okay. But that was something I was ever comfortable with or doing. And I thought him know that. Like, that's not like something. Oh, God, my mouse. You guys slept in the same bed together. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. And this is not me coming at you as a person or a bad person because shit happens in the past, in the past, in the past. We can't change the past. Has he ever expressed to you? Never. Never. Has he ever made these statements about made you feel different? I don't remember. I'm going to be this. When you guys slept in the same bed together. Oh, God. You know, you know, did you ever wake up and find them cuddling? Did you ever wake up and find them closer than you thought they should be? They would They would snuggle, yeah. Okay. But I, I, we all snuggle. I didn't think that that was abnormal. So you guys are sleeping in the same bed. She's in the center. You've woken up and they're snuggling. They're under the same blanket. They're not under the same blanket. No. But just like she's at her own blanket. She's spooning home. for what? Mm. Now, what is snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling, spooning, big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this, and she would be right here in his in in the nook. Okay. Um. How do you guys sleep? Do you guys sleep clothed, unclothed? I sleep clothed. Clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. Uh, on pajamas or baggy t-shirts and shorts. Okay. And second would sleep uh, with his t-shirt or boxers, sometimes with his pants on, but he didn't have pajamas. Okay, so they would snuggle, sometimes him being his boxers, he'd wake up and she'd be in the Did I hear the right thing? He would wear boxers and a t-shirt, sometimes with bottoms on. With, let's just go back. Well, just listen. I know that was something I was ever comfortable with or doing, and, and I let him know that. Like, like that's not like something. So. 
you guys slept in the same bed together. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. Stephen was a big portion of your life at one point. And this is not me coming at you as a person or a bad person because shit happens in the past, in the past, in the past. We can't change the past. Have you ever made comments, these statements about made you feel different? No. Okay. When you guys slept in the same bed together, in the middle, did you ever wake up and find them cuddling? Did you ever wake up and find them closer than you thought they should be? They would, they would snuggle, yeah. Okay. But I, I, we all snuggled. I didn't think that that was that wrong. So if you guys are sleeping in the same bed and she's in the center, you've woken up and they're snuggling, they're under the same blanket, they're not under the same blanket? No. But just like, she's got blanket, she's spooning got for what? Mm. How, what is snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling is spooning. Big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this and she would be right here in his, in, in the nook. Okay. Um. How do you guys sleep? Do you guys sleep clothed, unclothed? I sleep clothed. clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets? Yeah. Everybody? Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. Uh, on pajamas or baggy t-shirts and shorts. Okay. And Stefan would sleep uh, with his t-shirt or boxers, sometimes with his pants on, but he didn't have pajamas. Okay. So they would snuggle, sometimes him being his boxers. He'd wake up and she'd be in the nook of his arm, essentially in a cuddling position. And you never found that weird. No. Okay. Again, you and I may find things different. Why? And I don't want you to look back on it because now you know you victimized her for a long time, right? Under your roof. With you home, most likely, because you said you're always home. You just got this job. You're living off disability. I know the Kissing the Police Department has showed you pictures. I know they've verbally explained to you some pictures. I can tell you that today, you're still downloading his Google Drives, we are still going through his social medias, his cloud-based servers, and everything else, and we can now piece back her victimization in your house under your care to 2020. I believe you've gone far as far back as in when she So when I ask, they've woken up cuddling, did you find things suspicious? Do you have an open with she talked to you? Has he made inappropriate statements? It's almost like cheating. Right, have you ever cheated on? Okay, somebody can only like, cheat on somebody for so long until they fuck up. Has anyone noticed how this officer here, he keeps tapping his leg or his foot? Right, now I was once told when you do that, it's a sign, it can be a sign that you don't want to be there. It's, an assi- it's a sign of, of, I would say, annoyance. Yeah, it's like he's. A, He's so getting so annoyed with what she's saying. Her replies, it's like, oh god, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna, I want to smack her one. You know what I mean? I'd be doing the same if I was in that room with her. I'd be going. My leg would be going as well. Or until something comes out, or somebody says something, right? So if we go back to 2020. We're looking at a minimum of three and a half years. Three and a half years where I'm sure you guys are sexually active. Yes. <laughs> so for three and a half years under your care in your house, not only is he being sexually active with you, you had a sexual relationship. <laughs> and I know it's an emotional thing. And I know it sucks to hear. But where I'm coming from is it seems like something that you can't hide forever. You guys live in a small space close quarters, you sleep in the same bed, you guys all talk, you guys all share things, you're an observant person for the most part, I assume, outside of taking medications and going to sleep, it seems very difficult. A lot of grown-ass adults can't hide an affair with somebody who doesn't live with them, let alone somebody who does live with them. So at a certain point, I do believe you became aware of what was going on. No. And when I say that, it doesn't mean you're in trouble, it doesn't change. I know, but... But I do believe that a reasonable person, I consider you a reasonable person, right? Think you're a reasonable person? Yeah. No. Would be aware Not reasonable. that under her it's roof, selfish. sexual relation. The videos, the text messages, the images, they're all documented forever. This has been an ongoing thing. And at her age, I think she probably thought they were in a relationship. She probably thought they were in love because he her male attention. She just started liking boys, right? She just got a crush. Up until then, her crush.
at the same time, you guys are sleeping in the same bed together. You guys are all cohabitating. She's not sleeping in her room. But you felt the need to establish a rule that they couldn't sleep in the same room. But when you establish that rule, for three years, she's already been dating him, essentially. Oh, Whether no that's idea. legal or not. I have no idea. So I truthfully believe, this is my belief, this is, I'm not speaking for other detectives, I'm not speaking for the sheriff's office, the same police department, or any other agency I've said. This is Kevin's belief. I believe that you became aware of your sexual relationship. I think at a certain point throughout this relationship, you became aware of it. And for whatever reason, your reasons are your reasons, whether it was discussed that it would stop, whether it was discussed how it would go, that you feel some sense of guilt. A lot of the news statements you've given, kind of, again, my opinion only, I don't speak for anybody else, whether it's in this room or out of this room, bother me. It seems like some of your emotion, up until this room, I think some of the emotion in this room is sincere. I think a lot of it's because of being an asshole. I'm telling you things you don't want to hear that shouldn't be said out loud. But when you talk to the news, when you talk to deputies, it feels, based on my experience in this job, that it's not sincere. I feel like some of your sadness is not real sadness. I feel like when you gave the interview with Fox 35, it was not sincere. Looking at that video one time, I didn't feel like your cries were sincere. And I'm not saying that because you're a bad person. I feel like sometimes people struggle to show real emotion when they're aware of what the truth is. So it has to be fake. This is nice for the past, let's say five years, right? But her going missing, her disappearance, if you have knowledge of how it happened, where it happened, and inclination, that emotion is not going to feel sincere because you're already aware of what happened. I would, it's almost because if of I lie knew, that if I knew anything, I promise you, I would tell you. Like I am willing to take a lie detector test, whatever the fuck you want, but I don't know anything. He's never mentioned anything. I've never seen any signs. I tried watching her like a hawk. I thought I was doing a good job, but I wasn't. I was oblivious to this every four years. Minimum. That's just how that, that far back the cloud goes. <laughs> I, I was... find it hard to believe for me that you were so worried about how many pills she took at night. But not where she slept or what relationship she was his interest in her. I thought we were all safe. I thought because that he hadn't shown me anything so far. Like everything seems fine. Like he seemed like he treated her like Like he treats you. In his mind. I fucking just so now he's in jail because of what we found on his phone. Not because somebody came forward and reported that he was abused. No, I know. She's not old enough to consent. She's not old enough to have a thought process to even want anything that was happening to her. It's abuse. <laughs> so he's in jail for that. But something caused what happened. Right? We searched her because we can call her murder. She didn't die naturally. She didn't overdose. She didn't have a heart attack. We circled her on Monday. Something had to cause that. He's been having unrestricted sexual activity for a long time. He's getting what he wants from her, from you, and who knows whoever else, right? So it's not like he woke up or went to bed Sunday and he was like, you know what? I'm done with this, but I'm going to kill her. Something happened. People don't just wake up and like, you know what? Yeah. He's sitting on the point there. Something happened, right? Now, on the Saturday, as I said, she phoned him. He made out to his, my parents that it was about the party. I think it was something else. Now, in the other interview she did before this one, the one where it was the same day, the interview they did with her was the um, same day that they arrested Stefan. And we're going to see that interview, not of her, but of the day he got arrested. And, um, what was I saying now? So, for her not to know something was going on, right? Oh, that was it. They was questioning her about her menstrual, right? And we, I think, this is just my opinion. I think she told him. She thought she might be pregnant. Perhaps Madeline, because she hadn't had her Auntie Flo come visit that month, right? And Jane even acknowledged in the other interview she did that she had noticed that she hadn't used any of her 
uh, hygiene projects. Right? And I think I was hinting at the fact that she probably thought, Madeline probably thought she was pregnant. Because I'm sure in a state, in some states, if someone is pregnant and someone kills that person while they're pregnant, right, they can be charged with the murder. But then again, she might have been pregnant, but in some states, I believe that if it's under a certain, uh, if it's under, say, three months, they don't class it as a pregnancy. Something like that, under a certain amount of time, certain like five, six, eight weeks, anything under eight, eight weeks and under maybe, they don't class it as a pregnancy, as a baby. Right, so they won't get charged with that, but in some states they do charge you for the murder of that unborn baby as well. So I'm just wondering, could she have thought, or could she have, but had been, could she have been pregnant? And that's what started it all up. They beat people, they break up with people, but usually things cause people to snap. Now, what, you know what, now, got in trouble, or I feel like I'm going to, or him being, we can go even worse. She's pregnant. That's what questions last night led me to believe when we started talking about her period. I was told that her and her friend, and granted, I'm a male, never had a period but that somebody found it weird that they were no longer in the same cycle. Could be different because she's a teenage girl. Could be that she missed a period. Have you ever found a pregnancy test at home that wasn't yours? I have two underneath the kitchen, the bathroom sink, but I haven't seen if they're still there or not. Okay. But you haven't seen any used ones in the trash? No. Their relationship hasn't changed? No. Okay. So what do you think happened Sunday? Other than him killing her. What do you think made him snap? I don't know. Theory that I, I keep hearing. Tell me theories. your theories, because here's the deal. We don't go home until she's found. No, I know, I so know. So what are your theories? What I've heard is, what if, what if she upset him and threatened to tell me and say that she was going to tell me and he needed to shut that down? That's the only thing. What do you think? You don't want to believe he killed her. I want to believe he's still alive and that she got kidnapped, but that doesn't seem like that's the well, case at all. No. I know. I know. I raised a lot of people. Something else. I just want to believe she's still alive and she's out there. Did he tell you he fucked up? No. He, he acted so normal that day. He was like, I'm so impressed. We got out of the house so early. Like, she didn't. She made great time. We had so much time to go to McDonald's, but she didn't want to. His story was so fun. Like, every detail was so believable. He's just been lying the whole time. Like, he... What about that damn car? What are you offering the lawyer? Did you disclose anything to you there that made you feel like, oh, fuck, No. He acted... He kept, he kept, like, he kept acting like he didn't know what was happening. And I'm like, don't you see forensics? Don't you see I took your phone? I'm like, something's happening. Like, I think they're going to pin this on you. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, they have the wrong guy. Like, they're, they're just honing in on the last person who saw her. But, no, you guys knew more. You never said, what did you do? I've never asked him any of that. I still, even, even up until when we got here to the police station, I, I, I was just, I was convinced that he hadn't done anything to her. At all. Because of him or because of not wanting to believe she's deceased? Because of him. Because I, I thought he was a good guy. 
So up until this morning, you still think that it's not. No, 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 no. We're up, talking about the other day. Up until, up until. When he took him. Yes. Okay. I forgot what you. Okay. So we're still going to do his phone, his drive. Like I told you all the socials. We're going to date back to 2020. Based on the videos, it appears that was the start of the victimization. Okay. Are you going to find anything in his phone? With you? No. Never been anything. We've never done anything. Has there ever been a request? For the two of you to participate in sexual activity with him, no. regardless if you say no or yes. No, he's never asked that. Okay. If we find pictures like that, is that going to surprise you? So if I'm in his Google Drive, if I have a sex crimes detective, a computer person look at his phone, uh -huh. and they tell me, "Hey, Kevin, I found a picture engaged in sexual activity or borderline sexual activity," is that going to surprise you? Yes, yeah, that doesn't exist. Okay. At any time during the course of your relationship, if he expressed that he's ever had sex with a child? No. Not, Not a child, but when he told me when he was in high school, he graduated high school like later, like older than 18. Okay. He dated somebody younger than 18. I think she was 15. Um, but I don't know how old he was, 19, 20. But he was an older kid in high school. Um, he graduated late. Um, but he had a really young girlfriend. Uh. He was an older kid in high school, but he had a young, not a kid, but a younger child in school. And you said the age, 15. She's still a child. He he had graduated, so he got to be, what, 18, 19? Right? She was, whoever he was with then was 15. That is still a child. Oh, my God. Her name was Kendall. Um, and I thought that was weird. I was like, that's a little too young. He goes, no, it's fine. We were in high school. Everything was normal. Her, her parents uh, loved me. Blah, 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 blah. But that's the only one. Have you ever gone through his phone? Okay. If you had any, knowing Stefan, knowing where he lives, knowing where he goes, how he conducts his life, give me your top five. I know you haven't thought about it. If you haven't thought about it, that's another weird thing I got. Since Monday. Right, we told you on Wednesday that we think he did it. Yeah. So from Wednesday till today, it's about 48 hours. Give me your top five places you think are possibilities based on knowing him, based on knowing his path of travel. Where do you think? It doesn't have to be based on evidence, just in your gut. Give me your top five places where you think he. In this area, doesn't have to be this area. No, I know. Where you want. I'm saying in this area, I have no idea. Orlando Cassini, no idea where he could have taken her. But his trip to Northport is weird as fuck. I feel like in Northport, he knows more people. He has more friends. There could be a place and somewhere there he could have stashed her. I, you guys said he went into a, a storage unit. That would be another place to look. But um, there's plenty of woods around his house around. That exit is, is kind of secluded. Like when you say his house, you mean his parents' house? His parents' house, yeah. You've been there? Have you seen the property? Yeah, I've been there before. Do they have land? Or is it in like a neighborhood? So it's not a neighborhood because they don't have HOA. You just buy the plot of land and build it. Um, they don't have many neighbors. Okay. Um, or last I saw, I think there was a neighbor building right next door, but I don't know if they're done yet. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like he had more, there would have been more spots, more spots in, in Northport for her to be dumped. Because from what you guys have told me, he went to St. Cloud, he went to 192. Could you guys tell where he turned on one eight, on any of these roads? It's just that he was on the main road? I didn't think he ever, like, even knew where St. Cloud was, because we've never driven down that way, ever. Well, you live in Kissimmee, right? Yeah, I know, but to me, he's never had a reason to ever drive down to St. Cloud, like, ever. There's no store or anything he goes to down there. Everything is in Kissimmee, or Orlando by the mall. Florida mall? Yeah. Florida mall? Yeah, Florida mall? Florida. I sent, I sent the last detective, like, three spots. I, re I could have recalled him telling me he, he, he wanted to visit. Um, Monday, um, when he left the house, in the afternoon and got the flat tire. 
he had mentioned a, a few of those shops, so I, I sent them over to you guys. Um, it's honestly no way I can think of. We've never gone to the only wooded area that we've ever gone together would be Shingle Creek Regional Park, um, where the Pioneer Villages. Okay. Um, that whole trail there, we, we used to, we had scooters and he had like a, like an electric skateboard kind of thing. We would, we would all cruise, we would all cruise the creek, uh, explore. We've taken a canoe up that creek before. Um, then the Kissimmee Trail, there's a trail that runs right behind my house. It goes, starts right behind my house and goes all the way to that bridge on Dinah Parkway that says Kissimmee on it. That whole trail, we've done that as well. That's the only places I could think that like he may have gone because that's where I know I've gone with him before. Is there anywhere else I, I have no idea? So our ERT team, so we're your spots team, it's just a group of people who search areas. It doesn't have to be wooded, can be wooded, can be swampy. They've been out for three days. They're gonna be out all weekend. They will eventually there's today, there's tomorrow, or I guess in twenty twenty six. I don't think you want that to take too long. Right? I'm sure you'd like to have a funeral. I'm sure you'd like to have some kind of memorial service. <laughs> the last thing you want is for us to call you in a year and say, hey, we found remains. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. That may not be something you thought about till just now, but I can tell you being someone who investigates homicide, that is something that everybody has to come think about eventually. If you can think of anything that would assist us in making that happen to you today, versus two years from now, regardless of why you know or how you know, we need it. No, I know. If I knew anything, it would tell me right now. I promise. I wonder if I'm so bad. What has your communication been like with his father this? I've, I've, I've limited contact over the last two days because I just, I know too much and I don't, I don't want to tell them anything. You don't want to tell them what we've told you or you don't want to tell them what you know? No, I don't want to tell them what you guys have told me. I can't, I, I don't want to share any, I, it's, it's so difficult because I've known them for just as long as I've known the stuff that they've I Excuse me? You don't want to tell his parents what you've been told. Did you not tell his father the day that they told you that they believe your daughter is dead and that they showed you pictures of her in the car? They showed you pictures of her with Stefan with your daughter. Did you not say to your his father, you need to get him an attorney because he's been grooming my daughter? For two years. Did you not tell him that? They feel like absolute shit right now. I know that they kind of got into a fight because Chris, are, are you sure we know our son? Are you sure we know our son? I don't think we know him at all. The mom was defending him, but now, now with everything, with the evidence on the phone coming out, they know. <sighs> they know he's a piece of shit. <laughs> we talked to his dad, and his dad knows as much as you know. He yeah. knows his son's a rapist. He knows his son's a murderer. <laughs> he's talked to us. He's been very open with wanting to help in any way he can, whether that's technological, whether that's verbal. Yeah, he, he even had, I was with him when he turned in his knife to you guys. You remember he had a knife on him and gave it to you guys? His dad even thinks sh this mother of the year not is involved as well. I thought that was... 
Have you talked to Chris about Stephanie getting a lawyer? Yeah. When? I think when you guys showed me the the the, the photos. So he showed you photos of Stephen raping. No. First thought you had was to ask his father if he should get a lawyer. No. I saw a picture. I didn't see the rape. I didn't know she was getting raped until yesterday. I saw the picture of the oral sex happening, and I I knew that that was true. Right? That's evidence. That's for real. That's fucking happening. But I kept thinking they're going. I don't know why I kept. I, I can't tell you why my brain kept thinking, no, he didn't kill her. Not that he didn't kill her, but she's still missing. She's still out there. She was taken. Yes, he's done this to her, and that's not okay. But I swore she was still, I felt in my body she was still alive. She was still out there. I told Chris to get him a lawyer because I felt like you guys were chasing the wrong person, but you weren't. You're not. I showed you a picture. The picture you saw, she was giving a blowjob to a grown-ass man who's and you told his dad to get him a lawyer. Missing, right? Yeah. Now you but then you just thought she was missing. And we were showing you our investigative lead being raped. A blowjob is rape. Not consensual. Whether she wants to do it or not, that is not consensual. And you prioritized him again. You prioritized him by offering him or telling his dad to get him a lawyer. Not what the fuck they do. This hey, we need to figure out what happened. There. No, let's protect Stefan. Yeah. I wasn't shocked. No, it's not shock. That is your natural instinct to protect Stefan. Okay? And if that's naturally how you react, that's fine. But that goes into what I've been telling you this whole conversation is I don't believe a lot of the things you're saying, and I don't believe a lot of the things you say you weren't aware of. And that is because you've now shown me twice that your first reaction, no matter what you were told or shown, is saying we're seizing cell phone and we're showing you pictures of her giving him a blowjob your first reaction is to protect Steph. so now exactly if you saw pictures of your partner or ex-partner with your daughter and your daughter giving him a bj Oh, I'm just going to go and get him an attorney because they're framing him. Uh, no, the proof is there, love. Whether he unalived it or not, the fact that he was abusing your daughter is enough for any mother to go, you know what? Let the fucker rot. You know what I mean? And I like this detective because he's going at her. Murdered by Stefan. You're aware of this. You were shown pictures of this. You were shown pictures of her body in his car with a seatbelt on, right? We have played it out for you. Now, now you're in a stage where he's in jail. You know she's passed away. And now you can feel emotion, right? Until that point when you were shown that she was deceased, your continued first reaction is to protect this guy. I, I, you just said, I only saw a picture of him, whatever your verbiage was, I say blowjob, of his penis in her mouth, and your first reaction was, fuck, oh my God, victimized? No. She's being abused? No. It's, Stefan needs a lawyer. Who the fuck cares if we think he killed her? He's I don't know why, I don't know why I said But that's the problem. You don't know why. So the reaction in your mind is you are continuously protecting this guy. So why do I sit here and believe that you don't because right now, you know Stefan killed her. You know Stefan's been raping her. You know without her body, can he be charged with murder? I don't know. Exactly. So you don't know what we can do. Do I think we can charge him with murder? It's not up to me. Should he be charged with murder? Yes. Please. Does your role in her life lead this to happen? I'll be honest. Yes. I know. Since she was a child, since her victimization started, it occurred under your roof, and you acted like it didn't exist. And knowing the victimization, knowing the victimization, know. knowing how ongoing it is, knowing that you saw a picture of it, not just us telling you, not me and him saying, hey, listen, he's being, I think they had a bad relationship. They showed you a fucking picture of it and you still protected him. So how am I supposed to not think that the thought process in your mind is until she's found, Stefan can't be 
charged with murder because we both now know I don't, that you don't want him to be charged with murder because you want him to have a lawyer. No, I don't. That was, the blow job. that was oh, then. Oh, he can't be charged with murder. That was then. Everything that you guys have shown me since then and have shown me that he's so alive. So we have to show you a picture time. of her dead in the car for you to finally not take his side? Do you not see where I'm coming from? Like, I'm not trying to no, be a dick here. No, but I it don't. makes absolutely no sense that you were named. It is Stefan. I don't know. Where did your mind go? Stefan. I swear to God. If that was me, I'd be getting them photos out and slapping them on the table. One, two, three, whatever. That's Maggie in the car. I'm alive. That's Maggie with Stefan's pee in her mouth. That's Maggie and Stefan with Stefan licking her. You know what I mean? But you still stick, you still went out and said to his father, get him an attorney. Even though you'd seen those pictures, even though you asked to see more and they said they couldn't show you more, why would you want to see more pictures? They've shown you several pictures of your daughter with that piece of shit. And yet she still wanted to see more pictures. I will get that interview and we will play it. Because I, when I heard that interview, I was fuming. There, there should have been no doubt in your mind when they showed you that picture of what he was doing to you that you had any care in the world other than I want that motherfucker to die. Yeah. Whether you believe in the death penalty or not, he protected him. So now we're talking about her disappearance and where her body is. Why do I believe that you're still not protecting him? Because you say so? Because you can't explain why you protect him. You can't explain what is inside of you that makes you protect Stefan. And you may never be able to explain it. But eventually we're going to have to figure it out because you haven't convinced me that you're still not protecting Stefan. I got all these people out here searching. I haven't seen my own kid in days because I'm looking I truthfully believe that I can't go home and see my kid is because you're protecting I can't your people sitting in the woods just waiting for me to tell them where to go, but I can't because I think your is in trouble. I don't care about him. I want him to go to jail. I want the worst thing possible to happen to him in jail. I know what happens to predators in jail. Like I'm ready for that. Like, please, I don't give a fuck about him. I'm not protecting him. But you knew he was a predator when you showed, you got showed the picture. And then he texts his dad that he needs a lawyer. You hope that he invoked was the words I was told. What? You hope that he didn't talk to us. He needs a lawyer. No. All over a picture. You didn't care. You didn't care then. Oh, whether sex isn't important. important you no. Know, it wasn't anything close. I knew, I knew what I saw. Was he was terrible. a predator right then and there. That's the day you found out he was a predator. Yeah. Yes. And after you found out he was a predator, did you not say he needed a lawyer? Okay. So why today, Friday at almost three o'clock, five days into the disappearance, two days since you probably found out, or one day since you found out she was murdered, do I believe you that you're not telling me where he went or that he didn't disclose to you where she was or what caused this to happen is, listen, I know you know I've been doing whatever or listen, this fucking happened. How do I believe that that didn't happen when everything you've shown me is protect Stefan? Now, once have you shown priority in this conversation, in this investigation, you're coming here looking for her. You reported her missing. Trouble for not doing that. But outside of you reporting her missing, and I may be wrong, I haven't been involved in all aspects of it, but you have not shown me one bit that you prioritize her over him. And that sucks. Not because we're working our asses off for your family, not because we're. Well, that's it. These detectives, they're working around the clock. Some of them, probably by the time they get home, their, their kiddies are in bed, asleep. They're getting up before their kiddies are getting up. You know what I mean? They are on the clock, right? Looking for her daughter. And all she can do is protect that piece of scum that did what he did to her daughter. All she can do is protect him. And now... Nah, I'm totally with this detective. Why should we believe her now after what she did? By getting him an attorney, that attorney then will turn up and say, he's not talking no more. And that would be it. They'd have to shut down. 
we have people out there sweating their asses off for your family. But because I feel like all I care about is your care is to make sure Stephanie doesn't get held fucking accountable. Well, I don't care anymore. Anymore. Because we're being assholes. Because I'm not being nice. No. But up until Thursday, it was okay that she gave him a blowjob. No big deal. Get a lawyer. No, it wasn't. It wasn't okay. I was honestly, I saw that and I was in shock. And I don't know why my first reaction was to tell him to get a lawyer, but I saw that and I was in shock and I was just like, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. It's easy to believe it now. We showed you pictures of it. You can't deny it anymore. You, the sex was okay. The murder was not. At least, no, at least that no, makes sense. No, that's okay. I want to know what it is. And not because I think you're a bad parent. Because I think you're a bad parent. Dead or alive, she's missing. Her body is out there. Her body is near covered so she can have a proper burial, a proper funeral. She needs to be laid to rest. Your family needs to be able to mourn her. And we need that information. That is life. That is not life of the law. That's not life of the sheriff's office. That is common decency. That is what she deserves, that is what you deserve, that is what your family deserves. But the longer that happens, the longer it takes us to find her, the less likely that's going to be for you guys. And I'm sorry if I'm wrong, I truly am. But deep down, you haven't shown me that I am. I don't know what I need to show you. Prioritize her over Stephen. Think, Stephen, think of places he would have dumped her body. Think of places he went, things you talked about, things you've discussed, whether it's this week, last week. Don't put it in your mind that he's been victimized or don't put it in your mind that I'm being a dick. And what can I think about to find out where Stefan put it? You know more about where he goes, what he's doing, or what he would do than you want to realize. That's natural. Not because I'm telling you, but because that's natural. I have best friends. I know more about them than I think I know about them. I just need to sit down and think about it. So I need you to sit down and think about it. Whether you need a minute, we're not in this room. Whether you want to do it this in this room, we need to leave here with an idea of where we can go look for that is one thing we can agree on. I sent you a list of the stores that he may have stopped at and didn't stop at. The only outdoorsy places I can think of that we've ever gone to that he would know about would be Shingle Creek or Kissimmee Trail. I don't know if he knows where Lake Toho is, but that could be another option. Because you think it's a wooded area? Because it's a place you guys have talked about together? Because it's a wooded area with a lake with gators? Like, we haven't discussed, we haven't discussed anything. I this topic I never I never asked him if he directed I never thought he could have. I always assumed the best in him. But I didn't ask him directly. I didn't even suspect. I didn't even suspect that until you guys showed me that picture upstairs. But even when I showed you the pictures, you didn't believe it. I'm just thinking of, if I name places, it's going to be wooded areas that I can think of, but he hasn't told me anything. Like, he has not told me, or we haven't discussed. So him going to 192 that day, all you know was, is that he went to 192. He said he, he wanted to visit House Card Rules. That, show, that was one of, he named three stores, and that's one store I can remember him listing on that list. House Card Rules? Yeah, I don't know okay. my phone. We'll get your phone but House Card Rules, what kind of store is that? I don't know if that's like a... Video game or card game or board top game store. That's on 192. Oh, okay, okay. Close to one. I think okay. I think close to 182 somewhere. And you said you wanted to go to three stores. Yeah. But he did tell me that he did. I just don't remember which one. Are there woods in that area? Are you familiar with 192? No. Not, not where these stores are. I have no idea. Other than... You came up with wooded areas that you know of. Yeah. You can know with wooded areas that you think you could double body in. Because I've been there with him, yeah. I need to know wooded areas where he travels. Right? You're, you're saying we've been there, so she could be there. So that tells me she's not there. It tells me it's a waste of search. Because okay. when I put 90 plus people there, that's all day. Right? we got to coordinate that. we got to put them there. So we need fruitful searches. Yeah. So I need likely places that you think. I need places you think based on the conversations with him, not because you can picture in your mind that there's trees there. Interested in being anywhere near the woods or it being along his way. He said he got a flat tire. Tell me about the flat tire you got. Um, so he said he got a flat tire. Um, I'm not sure what when he got a flat tire, but he said it was he got a flat tire and then came directly home and he got home around 2 40. 
So flat tire, he said it, he was driving down 192 and just popped and shredded and fell apart. Um, and he pulled over into a plaza and changed the tire for the first time in a very long time and said he hurt himself doing it. Uh, the frame of the car, something came down on his finger. All his lies, I don't care, but I want to know what you question him about. Why was he there? What was he doing? You know where you're the most trusting woman in the world. You just don't ask clarifying questions. I know no relationship I've ever been in is that trusting. He just tells you he's gone at three in the morning, getting a fucking wild wild, and you're like, yeah, whatever that. Same thing with this. It's like, oh, I got a flat tire. I was here. Why is he in these places? Do you not question him? Why were you on 192? Why did you dip out at three in the morning with my car? I didn't know this, that. This is two times he went to 192. Went to 192 the day she disappeared, right? He's roaming, looking for her south of where she went missing, because supposedly she went missing. And 192 is south of where that is. And I, I asked. Very likely that that's the route she went on foot or abducted, like him driving around, and somehow they don't locate her. And he did, and he did. I did question that. I was like, when I asked him where he searched, and he said 182, I said, why? That's no where she where she would be. And he didn't give me a clear answer, and, and I don't know why I didn't push it. I just thought he was being stupid and oblivious because I don't, I don't see him as the smartest man. Like I don't, I, I let him do what he does, but I don't trust a lot of his. You don't push him when he tells you that he's got a puncture on, and you got this puncture on this road. Why? You know what I mean? Why did you not push him? Why was he there? I thought you was going here. But then you get a puncture here. So what was he doing there? You know what I mean? This woman, oh God, she just gets my teeth rattling. The word judgment, I'm not sure, but I just don't trust that he makes the smartest decisions sometimes. Like, he likes to act like the smartest man in the room, but I don't think he is. Do what he does. Meaning? I'm sorry. He said, I let him do what he does. Yeah. So. If he wants to just get up and go to the store, I'll ask where you're going, but I won't stop him. Just let him go on his way. Um. Mm -hmm. Just let, let him do what he wants to do. What do you think happened? Monday well, didn't know. You know she's deceased. We showed you pictures that she's deceased. We know that she was probably deceased Sunday and Monday. We didn't see her Monday morning. I still We're not. I, believe she's I, know you, we, I know you showed me pictures, but for like. For the purpose of this conversation, I need you to believe it. I need you to figure it out. I need you to, I need you to tell me what you think happened to her. I think he killed her that night. How? I don't know. Could it be possible that he drugged her? Could could he have choked her? I, I just don't know how you kill someone and don't leave a mess or don't leave evidence or I mean, was there a mess? Was there evidence? I haven't gone upstairs. I don't know what that what what you guys have I barely went into the house today, so I don't know what I need to know what you think happened. I think he killed her. How? Oh. You mentioned drugged her, you mentioned other things. Explain your reasoning behind those assumptions and we'll move forward. Everybody. So he had access to benzos and I think Lunesta. What are those? I'm not familiar with that. Benzodiazepines are anxiety medications which relax you and can make you sleepy. Okay. Uh, and Lunesta, I think, is a sleeping medication, like for insomnia. So I don't know if it's possible he, he gave her something and she was drugged. And, and those photos that you showed me where you're saying she said maybe she was drugged. No, right. but she was dead. She is dead. E -E I he was downstairs. I could just only imagine that he choked her. I don't know how else you would kill someone and not leave a mess. How do you think he got her out? I have no idea because roommates come in and out of the house at any given point in the morning and we don't know their schedules. They can come in at any time. You guys showed me you guys showed me a picture, I think, of him or her in the car at seven thirty in the morning. My roommate left the house. She's the one who leaves the earliest. She left at seven forty five. So like what if he had waited a little longer? She would she would have caught him with a like carrying a body out of the house. How did he do that without being caught or seen? Because he took her out at the car before like, before sunrise. Did you guys check and see if any of my neighbors have ring cameras? Any? Nothing? Sunrise you know, was. Phone, but at this point, I need to know what you think happened to her. I don't need you to ask us what we found. 647. I need you to come up. So Over she was in that car. What do you I think, think happened that night into Monday? We do not know. So six forty-seven. No, her murder occurred Sunday or Monday. All we know is that when you went to bed, they went to bed together, and she's no longer here. 
so I need to know what you think happened. And in the interview with the one housemate who left the house at, I think she said 7.45, she didn't notice Stefan's car because she was looking for uh, another maker car that he used to use. She didn't realise he was using that this car, that car. She didn't even recognize, uh, remember, she doesn't even remember seeing her car because there was a van in where she normally parked her car. There was a van. Hold on, hold on. I think she was killed Sunday night, Sunday night into Monday morning. Yeah, I did. I had to open a new Facebook account. I'm thinking he carried her out of the house. I don't know how he didn't get caught by any of the No one heard. You're saying he drove around all around town. But I had to open a new. Well, there's a pair of vehicles across the road. I'm not sure where I'm going to that road to basically uh, ask for community rules, what I'm posting on. And then him coming home and meeting and coming home and meeting, what do you think? No, I, 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 I killed her. I'm not appealing. That's suspicious as fuck. It is suspicious as fuck. If you're writing a book, what do you write? This I say this is a fiction novel, right? You're now aware that he killed her. So now you can piece together a story of what happened. Yeah. Right? You don't know the story because you're not yeah. him. And you tell me he hasn't told you. So it's, it's not real. So you were telling me what you think. Yeah. Right? We know the killer. You know, he drove out of there on Monday morning. No, you know, he just started her backpack in the trash dumpster. You know, he just started her laptop and all right? So all her property was discarded to look like she's gone. Yeah, like he didn't have they leave. You've been told that they drove around Orange County, Seal County, or wherever it was. You've pieced that together throughout the week. Right? He's told you where, at least in his version of where he was and what he was doing. But then you have all these suspicious times of when he's left and come back and he's gone here and gone there. So what do you think he was doing in all these suspicious times? He's roaming 192. What do you think? Knowing what you know now, now we can play. You know she's dead. You know that we've given you information. What do you think, knowing what you know, he was doing at 192? He was doing here. He was doing here. He was doing more. What do you think? So him leaving early in the morning and driving around yeah, yeah, somewhere. somewhere. I feel like he stashed the body at that time when he came back and then left yeah. again. But it's daytime. Like, how could you move a body or move something in daytime and not listen? I'm just doing it. Like, I feel like he went back to change to check to go change a job or to move the body again. I don't know. But him leaving the house multiple times without his cell phone catching his phone. It's so suspicious. Which is an intentional act, it's not accidental, so that can play into what you think happened. Yeah. Phone being on the dresser. It was intentional. Her cell records and her cell data from her cell phone show it is not common for her to leave her phone at home. It's common for her to go to school with her. You know, a teenager leaves their phone at home, so they're attached to it. She's left her phone home multiple Her cell data shows that normally it goes with her, so that's intentional. You know it's intentional because he left his too. Yeah. Right? Whether it's an accident last Friday, this Monday, it was not an accident. So you think that he dumped her when he was driving around? You think that when he left, he went to check her body? Okay. Why would you go back out to 192 without your cell phone? I don't disagree. If he goes out to 192, we think he may have checked where he dropped her or dumped her. He comes home, he tells you to just roam around aimlessly. Right? Yeah. So that's twice on 192 in one day, because he went to look at the house of cards bullshit or whatever it is, yeah. and then he went to do the roaming to look for her on this random highway that he never goes to. Okay. okay. So we go into the next day and the next day, Think of the suspicious things he's done. Tell me what you think he's doing. Him grabbing my phone and trying to log into his emails, that seems kind of suspicious. What was he trying to see? What was he trying to do? <coughs> the thing is, when he had my cell phone, I think back to it, he had something wrapped around it. So the phone was under a blanket and he was like this. I tried looking at the screen at one point and I could see him, you know. But and that was the cell phone we took you today, and you gave us today. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you guys tell me this is true? Because I recall family member telling me something, like my sister. Um, treats. Was the last thing searched on it Amber Alert? Her cell phone has Amber Alert searches in it. But I looked through her cell phone last night. I do believe that she may have been clicking on links for Amber Alerts that came through. I don't think she was actually searching them. Okay. It was going to she clicked on. I wasn't sure if that was him Googling on her phone about Amber Alerts or if that was her. That we will never know. It's not obviously cooperating. Can you, can, you, can you, like, can you explain what happened yesterday? Um, or that I need you to continue going away. Yeah. Uh, where do you, where are we at? Uh, suspicious utilization oh, of the phone. Of the phone. Him disappearing multiple times. Him disappearing to Northport. What the hell was he doing? That is suspicious. I mean, now that I know that that's where he went, that is suspicious as all fuck. Why? Why did he go to a storage unit facility? What was he grabbing? What was he trying to dispose of? Or what was he trying to hide in the, in the... That to me is suspicious. Do you put more weight on that than 192? 192, no, because 192 would be... Something happened in North Court. There was, there'd be no reason he would... Do you, do you understand what I was asking with that phrase? Putting weight on it? Like, do you feel like... It's more suspicious what he was doing in Northport versus 192. Both are suspicious. I don't know which one's I don't know which one's more suspicious to me. They're both they both 192 seems to me like the easiest place he could have dumped her or like figured out where to put her. Unless she was in my trunk the whole time and he went to Northport. Truck your car? Yeah. Didn't you drive your car at some point? Did you guys sit in your car at some point? I did. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I would probably sell something, but I didn't. I'm just trying to think, like, did he stash a body in Northport? No, I don't think so. He was probably hiding something or destroying something. So I guess 182 would probably be the most important right now. For being your truck is oddly specific. The only reason I say that is because from what you guys have told me, he went directly from the hotel to Northport. I don't think he made any stops anywhere in Kissimmee or anything first and then went to Northport. All we know is what we can piece together through accessible cameras and data. So his, his movements, his driving patterns, his actions, we can only 100% say what they are if we're on camera. Okay. So we can say he went to Northport because his car was in Northport, where he stopped, where he went in between. That cannot be factual for us if we don't have a camera it's the assumption which is why i want your assumption because you know him i don't yeah. if i fell asleep at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning at the hotel what was that monday night I'm just trying to think like could he have had time to stop somewhere wherever he stashed her and then took her to North Florida? I think he had time. Has he cleaned your car since he came back from Northport? He's brought it to a car wash and detailed it, paid somebody to come out? No. Because you, through your, we call it a fiction novel, you piece together what you think happened based on a suspicious activity and you ended with, you think he put her in your trunk and brought her to Northport. Yeah. I know I asked you to make assumptions, but now I want to know why. Why is that how we finished this? What What is in your mind leading you to believe that is the ending of the story? Because 192 seems like a really busy strip and I can't think of any where immediately, like, other than going deep into St. Cloud, like passing St. Cloud, like going into Holopa or Harmony, that I could see some stashing the body somewhere around there. But Northport has so many widget areas, and I feel like I don't 
don't know you'd be familiar with both areas. I just don't know him to ever drive down 182 super far down, like into St. Cloud. Um, but I've known him to drive around all around Northport. You don't know nothing about this guy, right? You don't, because you was just, oh well, do what you gotta do, I don't care, right? He told you a whole load of lies and you believed him. So, how do you know he doesn't know the one? 82 root or 92 root, whatever it was. You know what I mean? How do you know he's never been down that way before? How do you know he's never been down that way with little Maddie? You don't know him. But see, I don't want to say anything and like leave you guys down to North Fork to do a search and nothing there. I'm just We're going to go everywhere. You're searching woods right now or she's not? Okay. I just, I just want to be like, I know you guys are like looking for, looking at me for the details, but I'm like, I don't want to send you on a wild goose chase. You know him better than us. You got to really think. Like you want to tell us? No, I, 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 if I knew what to, if I knew what to tell you, I would tell you. If I had the truth, I would tell you. I don't know anything. Jennifer, where do you think he took her? If I were him, and I had to stash a body, but I would never, I would never do this. My mind would say to go to Lake Toho. There's a lot of woods there, there's a lot of gators. And I'm surprised you didn't go to somewhere like that where the alligators are, the gators are. You know what I mean? Because there's plenty of them places around that area. Where we could have took her. And then we did never find her. So thankfully he's stupid, he's thick, and he's a piece of shit. Oh God's sake. What is going on? Oh. What's going on? All right, let's get this off of that bit. Let's get this back on. Sorry about this. Oh, God, I'll just pass forward. Right, I'll continue about. I don't know. That whatever happened, I can tell you, and I know Pete Detective expressed to you that the thought process at this point is this is a homicide investigation. Yeah. Based on the evidence I've seen, based on the videos I've seen, I do believe. With that being said, and the reason. Uh, I think we just a bit further up. Uh, he would lay down like this, and she would be right here in his in in the nook. Okay. Um. Male or a period, but that somebody found it weird that they were no longer on the same cycle. Could be different because she's a teenage girl. Could be that she missed a period. 
Have you ever found a pregnancy test at home that wasn't yours? I have two underneath the kitchen, the bathroom sink, but I haven't seen if they're still there or not. Okay. But you haven't seen any used ones in the trash? No. Their relationship hasn't changed? I think when you guys showed me the, 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 the photos. Any more? Sex is okay. The murder's not. At least, no, at least that no, makes sense. No, that's okay. Not me. That's what he said. Oh, the sex is okay, but the murder's not. No. And I do really think they're hinting that she may have been pregnant. Right? Because when they were playing that clip about the pregnancy test and whatever, which I've just heard there, I was like the kitchen making myself a coffee. So. I want to know what it is, and not because I think you're a bad parent. I think we're further apart, man. We've got to go back here. We've pieced that together throughout the week, all right? He's told you where, at least in his version of where he was and what he was doing, right? But then you have all these suspicious times of when he's left and come back. He's gone here and gone there. So what do you think he was doing on all these suspicious times? He's roaming 192. What do you think? Knowing what you know now, now we can play. You know she's dead. You know that we've given you information. What do you think, knowing what you know? He was doing it all night too. He was doing here. He was doing here. He was doing in Northport. What do you think? So him leaving early in the morning and driving around aimlessly somewhere. I feel like he stashed the body at that time. When he came back and then left again. It's, it's daytime. Like, how could you move a body or move something in daytime and not be seen? But like, I feel like he went back to change to check to make sure you did a job or to move the body again? I don't know. But him leaving the house multiple times without his cell phone is sketchy as fuck. It's so suspicious. Which is an intentional act. It's not accidental. So that can play into what you think happened. Yeah. Do you think phone being on the dresser? It was intentional. Her cell records and her cell data from her cell phone show it is not common for her to leave her phone at home. It is common for her to go to school with her. You know, a teenager leaves their phone at home, so they're attached to it. She's um, left her phone home multiple Her cell data shows that it normally goes with her, so that's intentional. You know it's intentional because he left his too. Yeah. Right? Whether it's an accident last Friday, this Monday, it was not an accident. So you think that he dumped her when he was driving around? You think that when he left, he went to check her body? Okay. Why would you go back out to 182 without your cell phone? I don't disagree. She goes out to 192. We think he may have checked where he dropped her or dumped her. He comes home. He tells you he's just roaming around aimlessly. Right? So that's twice on 192 in one day because he went to look at the house of cards bullshit or whatever it is. And he went to do the roaming to look for her on this random highway that he never goes to. Okay. okay. We go into the next day and the next day. Think of the suspicious things he's done. Tell me what you think he's doing. <coughs> Him grabbing my phone and trying to log into his emails that seems uh, we've good. gone past this bit oh god what was he trying to see what was he trying to do gone past that bit if i knew what to tell you i would tell you on any of the days that he came home after these suspicious outings 192 trips north four trips and everything else he changed clothes he come home and appear disheveled sweaty dirty I don't believe he showered. He didn't bring that many changes of clothes with him, so I know he's repeated his outfit over and over. It's possible he could have come home all sweaty and disheveled after the supposed changing attire thing, but I wasn't home to see that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I didn't see him come home dirty or sweaty or anything like that. Did he do anything he normally doesn't do within the house around you? Yeah, he's washing. No. No. He was acting very normal, sitting on the computer chair, chatting away with me, talking about resetting his phone, not resetting his phone, updating his phone. Did she just say that then? 
talking to me about resetting his, uh, updating his phone. You knew. You knew. You knew. This was the guy that found Magdalene's body. Did he carry tools in his car to change the tire, typically? I think he said that was a tire iron in the car and all. Okay. Did he bring it inside? Did he leave it in the car? After? I think he left everything, everything in the car. Did you ever go look at his car? <laughs> Did you find that he changed his tire? Remember, Don, I need to go double check. So by the time he would have gotten back from the tire, you were gone, right? Yeah. What he told us? Yeah. And then she was reported missing Yeah. during that time. Yeah. And it never dawned on you to be like, damn, did he really change his tire? Let me double check. No. We got home really late that evening, and I didn't even think of doing that. This is part of our problem. You did so many things, and you never questioned it. Exactly. How, how can we believe? Some of the stuff that you're telling us, or believe that you don't know. Like, he comes home, knowing she wouldn't be there, right? And throws the threaded tire into the trash bins. Now I've been going, okay, so you had a puncture, so where's your old tire? Oh, it was threaded, so I just threw it in the. Why'd you do that for? You know what I mean? Because I'm sure you shouldn't be throwing tires into normal trash bins. I don't know how to say it. I mean, I, I guess I'm stupid and gullible and very trustworthy, but I didn't, I didn't think he'd be the type to do anything like this. I didn't doubt, I, Did you know he was vindictive? You described him as not trustworthy of his family. You described instances where you document where he was lying to his family, lying to you, lying to others. Lying to his family, yes, he, but you, lying you, to you me. You discussed that he wasn't that good of a person. Maybe we'll... It wasn't his family. You're not describing him in a positive light at all. So this trust, this, this caring, all this stuff makes no sense because you regardless of the victimization, him as a good person. He's stealing from his parents, right? But he never he, stole from me. You guys have no money, but all he's doing is ordering things, right? He's buying himself things. He's not. He, you described him as a selfish thief. You you called it a robbery that he robbed his parents. So you, you trust this dude who just you described him as untrustworthy. But I thought he was. What happened to her? Where did you find her? What's that? I can't fathom that. I can't wrap my head around it. I think I only asked him if he took her to school. When I when I called him and told him to come to the office, I asked him if you dropped her off at school, right? Because she never made it. And he said, yeah. I was like, she never made it. Where did you drop her off? Um, you guys sat in your car Tuesday night when I was out there. I was out there at least four hours. Just you two in that car. Yeah. You can't tell me you guys did not have any conversations at all. There's no way. Other than, a reasonable other person than, other would have been questioning him. You were the last person with her. What the hell happened this morning? You never did that in that car. Why? Because I would be. Last person to see my daughter. Where is she? Why are you acting all funny about your phone? I remember being on my phone. He was on my phone for a little bit. I know I was medicated. Yeah, blind medication. And I was just zoning out. I wasn't thinking anything of anything. I, I, I never asked him. Just asking him that one time to me was, if you took her to school, that, that was enough answer.
there for me. I don't know. I, I just wanted to think. Not think the worst, I guess. I don't know. But I didn't think he did anything. Now I know. But then I, just, I didn't. I was still believing everything he was telling me. Look, love. In them interviews, you went up to him and you hugged him and cuddled him because he was so upset. Then on the Tuesday, you're sitting in the car on the Tuesday night for four hours and you never said to what happened. Why didn't you drop her at the school? You was early enough to do that. Why didn't you drop her at the school? You know what I mean? Um, you're the driver. You're the one who knows when to stop. I wouldn't have dropped her there at that time in the morning. I just took her up to the school. At that time in the morning. Um, and what? All, why are you so bothered about your phone? First of all, you say, she's going to give her my phone. Uh, you know, first of all, you tell us you're going to a reset on your phone. But you didn't tell her you're going to never reset on your phone on the Monday night, did you? Hmm, Stephen? You did one Monday morning, and you did one Monday, early Monday morning, middle, mid-morning. And then you did one again at midnight, Monday night. Why did you do two factory resets? Did you not think the first one would do the job? You know what I mean? And then on the Tuesday, I took his phone. And he was questioning, should I give him my phone? Or should I wait for him to get the warning? Uh, you got nothing to hide. Give him your fucking phone. And then I'll be going, why are you so concerned about the phone? Why don't you want to give him the phone? What you got to hide? What are you not telling me? You know what I mean? Juvenile robbery suspects utilize the excuse of, I was high on bars, I took Xanax, I was blacked out, right? Every juvenile robbery suspect you, you interview, I was, in, in your words, medicated, in their words, high, incapacitated, drunk. It's an excuse to avoid admitting what happened. Yeah. When you say you're medicated, I can't think of an amount of medication that will numb you so bad to numb the fact that your that investigation is occurring right in front of your face, but you're missing. So being medicated is just an excuse to avoid answering why you didn't. Christ, as I said before, I want that medication she has to help sleep. Because I was talking to my son the other day, I said, this day's, you know, this medication I'm on is not working. Last night, I had trouble. Again, I was up, and I was up at, what, half two, because I wasn't sleeping. Right, tossing and turning. So I got up at half two, come through and made myself a snack and a drink. I went back to bed about, what, half four or five. And I was still up at nine o'clock in the morning. And then, so, I love that medication she's on. I cannot remember when I had a decent night's sleep. Like, I know when I've had a good night's sleep because I wake up and think, you know what? I didn't wake up last night at all. And I remember that. But there's not been a night, a day, in the past, what? Ten years? I'm going, I was... Uh, 30 summer, so 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 20 odd years, I have not had one night where I've had a full, just four hours sleep, even last night, I went to bed at like five and go up at four at night, <coughs> <coughs> that wasn't a full four hours sleep, I'll tell you, on my app, I meant to look at it earlier to see about my sleeping pattern, because I wear my watch when I'm in bed. Right? Sleep. Last night. Four hours, 42 minutes. Right? I had 
something for very little deep sleep, light sleep, right, deep sleep, uh, 29 minutes, light sleep, 2 hours, 18 minutes, and rapid eye movement, 1 hour, 55 minutes. Sleep quality score, 56. That's poor. Poor is anything from 0 to 60. Secondary is 60 to 75. Good is 75 to 90. And 90 excellent is 90 to 100. I'd love to see myself on that excellent one. Can I have some of her medication, please? Discuss with him what happened. It minimizes your guys' interaction by saying you were not fully coherent. But there's a person I know who can sit in a car and watch a bunch of detectives and crime scene investigators and everybody else search her house, seize her house, see her and be so numb that that somehow is not ringing bells, is not overcoming the power of this little medication. There's, there's no way. The human body will overcome that in a big situation. You didn't take off medication to numb you the reality of what was occurring. I mean, there's no way. Unless you were fully incapacitated, there's no way you were so numb that everything he described to you, everything I described to you, was not in the forefront of your mind. You weren't numb. Just like these robbery kids weren't blacked out. They weren't high enough to not remember the robbery. They just don't want to talk about it. No, it just, it wasn't clicking. It didn't click to me. Like, you, you guys telling me, like, it wasn't as obvious, like this and that. I, I still believed every other story he had told me that while we were sitting in the car, I still fully believed everything he had told me. I didn't doubt him. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. I'm like, they're wasting time. The, the, the real suspect is out there. She's being sex trafficked. That, that was my biggest fear that she was being sex trafficked. I didn't think that she would actually be dead. But she thought enough to get him a lawyer. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. At that point, from the jump, we've been trying to find her. No. Let's go back to when the guy that showed you the photos. The guy you wanted to see more photos. Was the photos they not showed you good enough to show you that he was assaulting, essaying your daughter, who was 13? And he'd been essaying her since at least eight years old. Right? Was that not enough for you to turn around and say, let him rot? Because if I'd have phoned his father, I'd have gone, by the way, your son can rot in hell. Do not contact me. I don't want nothing to do with you or your family or your vile piece of shit of a son again. And hold the phone up. That has been and will be our biggest priority. Him getting arrested for victimizing her was an accident. No one discovered that she was a victim because he took his phone. And I'm like so happy that happened because if not, this would have continued to keep happening. Well, it wouldn't have because he killed her on Monday. Talking about the chance of There's no, I've asked this before, but there's no like map you guys can show me of like where the highlighted route of where he could have taken to see if I could see if I could recognize anything or suspect anything. I can pull the map on my phone. Either you describe and we can go through it. Sure. Some house of cards? No. House, house game rules. House game rules. It's on Vine Street and Kissimmee. By Oak Street. Matt, house game rules, feel free to drag the map around as you please. Yeah, that's what I'm And realistically, Florida has a lot of wetlands, so anything you see that's green may not necessarily be wooded, just maybe a rule, but we're looking more for where you think based off of this route, not necessarily just like the green parts of the map. Yeah.
in the back of the house where you won't have access to wait. That is that is the one shop I can remember him specifically naming that he was going to that one day. He said House Angels. Did he make it there? I don't know. See, if we, ever, if we ever went down 182 together, it would typically be in this direction towards 535, towards Disney. That's why I find it really strange that you guys say it's St. Cloud, because we've never, I've never gone into St. Cloud with him before. So you told me you have a friend in St. Cloud. I do. I don't know if he knows, but explain to him where she lives, who she is. Explain that relationship to him, because I don't think he's aware of it. No. Oh, okay. Um, so one of my really good friends lives off of Old Canoe Creek Road, off Nolte. Okay. Um, I don't know what, what neighborhood though. Um, she's one of my really good friends. She's somebody I know that lives in St. Cloud. She's one of the like, two people I know that live in St. Cloud. Um, she's hung out with us, as in me and Stefan before. She's come over to hang out with me and Stefan. We hang out there too, so we all kind of hang out together. But um, yeah, she's just she's just a friend. Um, and you're a hundred percent sure he's never been to her house. Yes. Do they have their own friendship, or is it just that's your friend, and the only time he ever talks to her or hangs out with her is with you? Exactly. Just my friend. He would talk when she was around. And you just told me about the second person you sent out. Who is that? Um, somebody I haven't seen in a, a long time. Her name is Courtney Brackman. She lives, can you pull the map? Mm -hmm. But he's never been over to her house either. Lake Lizzie to me is familiar. I was mm -hmm. hiking there often. Uh, well, there's a preserve there. Yeah, a few years ago, we would go hiking all the time with my friend Courtney, the one who lives right by there. She did mention she used to go hiking with a friend, her, a friend, and Maddie. Now, would you tell him you're going to Lake Lizzie Preserve? I've mentioned it before, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like Lizard. When we talked about St. Cloud and, you know, he had asked for your top five places, um, why did this never, did this ever cross your mind? Lake Lizzie? Any of these places in St. Cloud that you're familiar with? Uh, I mentioned them the first time St. Cloud was brought up. I mentioned my two friends that live there. Um, and then, I don't know if I ever mentioned Lake Lizzie. Did you take one? Sure. Do you know if Lake Lizzie was special? She did enjoy going out there. Was she verbal about that? Did she make that known to you guys? She always told me that if we were, we were to go hiking out there, to let her know because I've gone hiking without her. Um, but it's been a really long time since I've gone hiked down Lake Lizzie with her. Okay. That's been at least two years. Is the only thing that I would know that he might be aware of, but. Especially your gut tells us no. Like, does he probably know? Like, does he or whatever what the name of the lady is? Probably not. See, while they've got her there, they are actually out looking for her daughter. This is the day, the 3rd of March. First of March, today they found her daughter.
Yes. The time on here it says fifteen twenty-two, so not much longer than I find it. Do I? Is he in video games? Yeah. Yeah. World of Warcraft into tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer Forty K, card games like Lorcana, Disney card games. That's what he told me he was going to go do uh, Monday. He was going to go look for Lorcana cards, and that's why he was going to go to House Card uh, House Gaming. Um, he was just going to make a few stops, and I said, "Why are you doing that? Why are you wasting time when you don't have money? Like you don't have money to spend." He's like, "Oh, I'm just browsing. I just want to look. I want to see what they have available." Every time I did questions, he always had an answer. Do, we, do you guys know, like, up until when on any two you guys found him, uh, see him? Like, how far down? We just know it's St. Cloud. Because I keep thinking, like, house game rules on 192. Okay, it's got some secluded stuff in the background, or in the, in, the, in the back of it. But it's still 182. It's still really busy. I must admit, I don't understand how he could hide her body where he did without being seen. Well, he was seen, but after he hit her body, it was after, right? And the landowner and it's in one of the documents stated that the gate was locked. So for him to get in there, he had to put Maddie over the gate and drop and drop her down on the floor first. Then he had to climb over the gate. Then he's had to pick Maddie up and carry her to the trees. Right? And yet, there was no cars going up and down until after, he was taking one hell of a chance that no car went past when he was carrying her over the road and putting her over the gate and then carrying her around this field up to the trees. A car could have come past. He's so brazen. Of course, like, he had her in the boot of his car when he went back to the house in the morning. Right? So when, by the time she gets home from the doctors, he's there. At that time, Madeline is in the boot of his car. Right? Because I've got it all pinned out on the map everywhere. I've just got a few more places I need to put on the map. Ping out on the map. And I'm using Google Google Earth, not Google Maps. Google Earth is easier to pin put pins on. So there's just a few places like that shop I want to mark up where that was and things like that. Right. And um but he was so brazen. First of all, he took her back to the complex. I think it was 10 past 8 in the morning, 50, quarter past 8. With her st strapped into the front of the car and spoke to the security guy on the gate. Right? He then leaves, goes in, gets whatever he had to get. Right? For whatever reason. Now, bearing in mind, it's light by now. Anyone walking past there will just, could have seen Maggie sitting in that car. Right? Jen was still in bed when he went back to the house at quarter past, twenty past eight. She never heard him come in. She never heard him leave again. He then leaves and he's driving around and he goes up to this car park, right, up onto the second floor, pulls up in the north-east 
North East, yeah, North East corner of that car park on the second floor. And he's on camera removing her body from the front of the car, front seat, passenger seat of the car, into the boot. Right? He then comes out of that car park and goes home. How about all those times he had you in that car driving around? All these places he went to with her in that car. Sitting in the front of the car at first. And then he comes back and he's in the house and she's in the boot of his car. Wow. So, Bryce. So, really, him pulling over and carrying her across the road or carrying her and putting her over a gate into a field and then climbing over the gate and picking her up and carrying her to a final resting place. So brazen, because it, anyone could have seen him. But you know what? It's like he knew that was quiet around that time of morning. He knew there wasn't a lot of traffic on that road. So right now, I'm pretty sure it's still doing your phone. I think. How'd you get here? You're driven here? I was driven here, but my dad followed behind. I think you guys have my car when you're ready. Okay, we'll verify that. Um, the invest, the, the invest, is it still going? Yeah. All right, Stefan also is not in charge of murder. All right, just a sexual He's not battery. Obvious. He is not. Oh, okay. He's just been charged with sexual battery. I have a couple questions for you that are going to be on record. They're going to be official. I need you to answer truthfully. Because if they determine that you did answer not truthfully, you can be held accountable for it. Make sense? Yeah. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that everything you talked about today in this interview is true and correct? Yes. Yeah. Did you lie to me? I don't think I any time. No. Okay. Do you currently know or have you ever been aware of where your body has been since Monday? No. Did you have any. Were you aware at any time, whether it be the most recent instance or the first instance? Organization section by Stefan. Okay. At this time, you do not know where Stefan went on 192. You do not know where he went in Northport. I do not. And you have at no time this week in any conversations with Stefan where he disclosed what he did. Okay. The story that we talked about of what at one point we discussed that she could potentially have been in the trunk on the way to Northport. Yeah. Is that information you, you know to be true or an assumption? An assumption. Do you have any questions for us before we go check on the phone in the car? We may not be able to answer everything, but if you have questions, we can see if we can't answer those questions. It's not your only opportunity. Your, your only opportunity phase was you saying swear. Yeah. You also have the opportunity to obviously have numerous detectives phone numbers, you have numerous agencies phone numbers, things like that. So realistically, there will be other options for you to ask questions. Okay. I don't want you to think I was purposely an asshole to you. No, I know. We're right. doing your job. Like I told you, like the sheriff's probably reached out. You've been in communication with numerous people here. Those are my opinions and my opinions only. They don't reflect Sheriff Nina, Chief of PD, Kyle, any other tech you talk to you. All right. I personally don't know. All right. We will be here all weekend. We will be here all night. My only hope is that you truthfully did not lie to us. You truthfully don't know where she was and that you truthfully did not know what was happening to her.
I think this is where. Oh yeah, I'm gonna find some I am. What time? Right, they found her by day around 4.30, right, and on here, it's got 15.28, right, so shortly after this, after this interview, is when they find Mag little Maggie's body. I can't believe how calm she is. You know what I mean? Her daughter's missing and she's like, yeah, okay. I do believe her when she says she doesn't know where the body is. I do. For some reason, I just believe in it. But I... I can't get over the fact that she never knew nothing was going on with her, between Stephanie and Maggie. I can't believe that. But then again, she wasn't the... Sort of like what we call it, helicopter mom, where they hover over the child all the time. She's a little sort of mother that was like, Oh, just do what you gotta do, leave me alone. Yeah, them are the sort of mums I do not like. So, but the fact that after it's been shown those pictures. She still believed Stefan was innocent. Oh, the sex was okay, but killing her, no. Oh. I'd be flipping buying a shovel to bury the fecker. I mean, there's no way I would be going to the part to his father. You need to get him an attorney because he's been abused, uh, grooming my daughter for the last two years. Love, that's only part of it. And you know what I mean? And as soon as that attorney turns up, that's when Stefan would go zip it. He'll go zip. Not getting another word out of me. Right, so tomorrow night we've got the interview with Stephen Stone where they are resting. Right, but for three and a half hours it's literally nothing. It's just sitting in this 
room and he's lying sleeping he's not sleeping he's right so we literally have that on fast speed to get through that it's just to so that you can watch it to see what he does and then then they come in and question him and then at the end of that questioning that's when they arrest him and that's when they take the photos of him and everything so we'll be watching that tomorrow night so tomorrow night is 18 well this is an 18 plus all my channels all my work i do is 18 plus you've got to be 18 to be on my channel you cannot be younger because it's not for their ears You're doing that right now. Your card is obviously going to be released to you. The Nissan. Okay. It requires us to do some paperwork because we did log it into our system. So now that it's our system, we got to release it properly to you, which is no big deal. Take a couple minutes. Because of the high profile. All right. I know you said we can download your phone, and I do appreciate your cooperation with that. But because the same way we do with Stefan and every other phone and digital device we've seen, so they're making us write a search warrant on it, which really doesn't affect you too much. The search warrant is a legal thing. It's not a you thing. It's not a trust thing. But with that, it, it takes a little bit longer. All right, so I can leash a card to you right now. We can go facilitate that downstairs. I cannot make you a promise that that phone will be downloaded by the time your card's ready. What I can promise you is that the moment it is downloaded, if you have left from here, I will bring it to you. Do you have, do you have, you're staying with your sister's phone? Does anybody have your sister's phone number that we can make sure we can communicate with you on? Yeah, uh, my dad is downstairs, I think, waiting for me, so I can give you my dad's number. Since Whatever phone numbers we can have, just to make sure that yeah. we are able to give you the phone back today. Yeah. And we, we are able to give you the phone back. We at least are able to contact you. And we want to make sure you have a phone to contact us. Just something arises. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Second update coming through. Hold on. Are you going to be going back to your condo? Or are you going to go to Kentucky State Police Troopers have located the body in the community? <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll walk you out of this back parking lot. If the car is in the back corner, so I'll walk with you. We'll go through the back so we don't go to the front lobby. It wasn't press conference today. Obviously, neither of us got, none of us got to see what was said. I assume it's just an update. Um, but we will go through the back to go get the car. And that way, we're not walking through the front lobby and making you wait out there. Don't know if there's still media present. I assume you're not in the state or moving to go walk past their video news cameras. So we'll go out the back and get the car, and I'll show you how you can leave here. And you can call your dad from the back so you can know where to go or where to meet you. We just tell them, hey, we're gonna, she's gonna be in the back parking lot and you can travel around. You guys can follow each other out wherever you choose to do that one. All right. Right. That's the end of that interview. Right, I was just saying, I've just had the message come through. Update, Kentucky State Police troop, Troopers have located your body in the vicinity. Hmm. Well, that's all it says, so let's have a quick look on here. Let's just see what it says. Uh, no, I think that was 
do that manhunt. Yeah, I think that is to do that manhunt. Right. So, what are your thoughts on this? I will get that other interview, the one they did on the Wednesday, and we'll go over. I'll play that interview, and that's the one where she turns the waterworks on and off, on and off, on and off. I'm thinking, I know she's on medication, but oh my lord. Right? And it's in there, it's in that interview, it is confirmed by her that she is, um, what is it, um, bipolar. So could that be the reason why one minute she's nice and calm, next minute she's in tears, next minute she's, oh, uppity, sort of thing. Oh, next minute she couldn't give a hoot. I don't know. But I want some of her sleeping meds. I'm on very poor sleep at the moment. Four hours, that's poor. Poor sleep. I want her medication. My son said it's because the medication, the tablets are on. My body's getting used to them. And I think they are, but I can to go back. Because I know if I go back, they, might, they can up it. Right, and I'm drowsy enough as it is when I wake up in the morning. I, I don't get, you won't get nothing out of me till about tw noon, noon. You know what I mean? So planning to go out for the day, forget it, forget it because I won't. I'll be up, I'll be up, but don't ask me to be fully awake, because I won't be. Anyway, let me know what you think. Thank you for being here with me tonight. This was a long one. <sighs> and tomorrow night we're watching the interview with Stefan Stearns, and that is the night they arrest him. So that would be a good one to watch. So if you want to see that, please, if you haven't already, subscribe so you'll be updated when I go live. I am live tomorrow twice. I'm going live at 7pm because I'm doing a case on Jill Danjo, right? And what I've been hearing on the grapevine sort of thing. And could... And could what I've heard be true? Could that be the reason why she was uh, murdered? Anyway, and then at 8 o'clock, my usual time, right? Something like no, I'm going on a bit later tomorrow. I'm going on at 9 p.m. tomorrow night because of what is shown in this police video, in the Stefan Stern's police video. I want to go a bit later so that hopefully all children, all little kitty wings, will be in bed and asleep and they won't be seeing none of it. Be it on the mum's phone, on the dad's phone, on the laptop, on the computer. They won't be seeing up. So I am going a bit later tomorrow, nine o'clock. And that's just so that the, I can do the first one from seven to eight. It'll only be about an hour long, the first live. And then I can have a bit of a break, get something to eat and a drink, and then come again live at nine o'clock. So please, if you haven't already, Please consider subscribing. If you're watching on replay, give this video a like. I know it's been a long one, but please give it a like. And if you're invested in this case, 
and I've been following this case and I've been doing videos, not daily, not week, you know what I mean, maybe once, twice, most three times a week I've been doing a live on this. Um, then subscribe. I will be putting a video out as well about the mapping of where he went on that day. But I've just got to finish off mapping it. And then when I've done that, I'll do the video on that. So please subscribe, give this video a like, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, stay safe.